Well, high atop the Pocono Mountain, six, sit 60 drivers looking to go ahead and do something great. Something that has never been done before in NR Night in America. Remember the old NASCAR games like NASCAR the Game Inside Line or NASCAR the Game 2011? Well, they had a game mode called Elimination. And for the longest, it was one of the more exciting things to play on that platform. Well, guess what? Here we stand and here we sit on iRacing to do just that. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR, and we're getting ready for your April Fool special in NR Night in America. Besides the weird and wacky schedule we have that's gonna go well into the PM and maybe the AM hours of this night, we start here in Pocono with a gimmick, a big gimmick that has never been tried before on this platform, Elimination. This game mode will consist of 45 laps, 43 drivers. Well, we said 60 drivers have worked their way to Pocono, which means Buff Day is still in effect like any other NR night in America. So let's run it down. Once we see 43 laps to go, the drivers sitting in last will automatically be eliminated, which is interesting because with a 45 lap race and with us most likely having no cautions during this race, you are gonna see pitch strategy. You're gonna see drivers battling and fighting and losing spots, losing time. The overall goal is just to not be last. Once last, you're automatically kicked out of the session. So pretty simple, lap 45 to get back to the start finish line. That's just one lap completed. 44 laps to go, should we say. That'll be two laps completed. On lap 43, if you're sitting 43rd, you're out. On lap, oh, so we say 43 laps to go. If you're sitting 43rd, you're out. With 42 laps to go, if you're sitting 42nd, you're out. With 41 laps to go, you're sitting 41st, you're out. With 40 laps to go, you're sitting 40th, you're out. Starting to see the trend here. It's gonna go down to the last lap and us having just two drivers remaining. Once two drivers are left on the last lap, it's just a race to the checkered flag where there will be a last man standing. So it should be interesting, should be exciting, and it also means qualifying is going to be a really big deal because you're going to want the track position to stay away from what the unnecessary things go on in the back. So let's run through it. What's different about this one? Still no fast repairs at all in this session, but we do have damage healing on. Damage healing will be on for race one and race two due to Wild West Motorsports Park being a very interesting racetrack. We'll get into that in a moment, but right here, right now, it's just about the drive to survive. Only one driver will be remaining at the checkered flag. So the admins will continue to add up where everyone will be. We're working through certain things, checking certain things out, but as of right now, it's like any other NR Night in America, qualify, be there at the end. That mindset is important. But I look down outside this looking post, Josh Berry, 43rd, needs to go ahead and find a little bit more speed. Carlos Ortiz, 44th, Matthew Post, 45th, Will Shaq 42nd, and I'm not sure if Barry knows about what we're planning on doing here tonight, but now he's on the outside looking in, Barry's back to 44th. Max Steinmeier is up to the 36th position, looking to go ahead and slot his way in. Mac is a driver that's been known for falling into the uncertainty, should we say. And, well, right now, this is a game mode that I don't think that benefits him. But it very much benefits Anthony Burroughs, who is usually up front, racing up front. And he just knows he has to be the last man standing to go to victory lane. After this, ladies and gentlemen, we'll head to race number two at Wild West Motorsports Park, a dirt road course that made the rounds in the afternoon hours of April Fools. Well, why is damage healing on for that race, you may ask? Pretty simple. There's jumps. 
and we can't break the suspensions. We did a bunch of tests. It is exciting. It's fun. It's almost like trophy trucks, but with a little bit of a NASCAR twist. And oh, by the way, 40 trucks going out there and reeling them in and running around. It's going to be an absolute blast. Race number three originally was supposed to be a rain race at the Roval, but that also changed out now to the GT3s at Oval. A call back to the Grand Theft Auto days and a call back to the PC2 days. What Oval? Well, that's up to you to decide, but if we're going to have a race for it, that is also up to you to decide because that would require 300 likes. Let's continue to track everything down. Another update. We plan on streaming tomorrow, another back-to-back -back night of NR Night in America. There's just one problem. The Middle Tennessee area where NR Night is broadcasted live through the power of YouTube is going to be under an enhanced risk for tornadoes. That is mostly in the afternoon hours. So there's a couple game plans in suit. One, a cancellation. Two, a start on time. And a third version, which seems likely, but... I'd rather it just start on time. A delayed start. The idea is to have race one be the next gens at the Martinsville Speedway. The reason why we're doing a back-to-back -back is because this weekend I'll be broadcasting live through Racing America at the Bristol Motor Speedway. That will be Saturday night. And I will be broadcasting live at the National Fairground Speedway Sunday afternoon for opening day festivities. Even better, the Pro Late Model version of that broadcast will be live through the power of YouTube and this YouTube channel. I'll be live through the YouTube Shorts app, and you'll be able to hear my broadcast with my co-commentator, John Nix, up in the booth at the Nashville Fairground Speedway. But you will not be able to see the action on track. If you want to see the action on track, that will be through Racing America, 2B TV, and I believe a couple other sites like Track TV. Well, that's a lot of information to pack in in just a couple of minutes. But in a matter of moments, we'll be ready to go green flag racing. It's Anthony Burroughs up front, Sean Rowe, P2, Barbagallo, P3, Jafari, P4. We look who did not make the show. Uh, Carlos Ortiz has yet to come in. Matthew Post is out. Will Shaq is in. Christopher James is in. We're looking to see who's in. Josh Berry barely makes it in. He sits 36. Max Steinmeier in 37th. Zach Gold, 38th. Ladies and gentlemen, 300 likes. We will see race number four. Let's go, ahead, let's go ahead and say those magical words. God, speed, drivers. You are go for throttle up. next time by just to line these guys in and get a feel for what the action will be in suit for. Herring, Thurston, Champagne. Lined up and ready to go green. That's going to be a lot of fun to see now. Already on your screen, 45 laps to go. We're going to change it, or 45 laps in this race. We will change it to 45 laps to go for the main reason of understanding. Every time we tick down from 43 to 42 to go, we will be eliminating one driver. So we will have two drivers racing once we take the white flag. Strategy will be important. You will need a pit at some point during this race. Undercut, overcut, expect drivers that are on the cusp of being eliminated to long pit. Well, the driver's up front short put but don't be surprised if some guys go out in short pit, they may accidentally eliminate themselves. So Sean Rose on the outside with Anthony Burroughs, which will be a lot of fun to see how they navigate through this night. We'll see the one to go this time by ladies and gentlemen. It's showtime for the Pocono Mountains and happy April Fool's Night in America. Herring, Gudger, Thurston, Champagne, Walker, Jafari. 
And the big thing is they can be calm in the first two laps. This is done by design to make sure we don't have anything really go for a miss. We'd hate for a driver starting in 43rd, already be in desperation mode on lap number one. And that would be Carlos Ortiz towards the back end with Zachary Seeley and Will Shack. They know that they have a couple laps to at least make their way through the field. And some were asking, why is it the car tomorrow? Well, we plan on going full on in how NASCAR the game 2011 was. Obviously, that car tomorrow is a little bit different. So we also said that eh, it's a nice callback to Inside Line with all of these cool future, uh, features. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go green. Time to roll. Burrows on the bottom, Sean Rowe on the outside. For the first time ever, NR Night in America will have a game mode of elimination. Don't expect this often. It's mainly being done because it's April Fools, but 43 drivers must survive for 45 laps as we light the fuse from the Pocono Raceway. Row on the outside, Burrows on the bottom. Trafari. Holds on and keeps it rolling off exit. And these guys are still very calm towards the front of this pack, but you look just a little bit deeper in this field. Gold, Shaq, all thinking, considering they know there's not going to be a cost in all trouble. Big rack towards the back half of this field. Looks like I'll be eating those words. We will have a caution, and the first drivers to be eliminated will be under yellow. Wow. Steinmeier, Steely. And the thing is, there is damage healing, but that was a big enough wreck that it would have definitely changed strategy up. And already the controversy start early. Ash Ridge, I believe, will be credited for the last place position unless someone comes down pit road with 43 laps to go. No, they're gonna give it to Max Steinmeier. And he looks to most likely be the first driver eliminated. We're not gonna watch back until we know exactly what we're hearing and seeing. Matter of fact, they're saying watch back now to see what happened because someone may actually be kicked for that situation. That didn't look good when they're pack racing down into the tunnel turn. Three wide looking, Aiden Walker shut the door, Douglas New Bigging. I believe got in the back end there, Michael Guga, no. That'd be the 48 machine, that may have been Ethan DeWeld. That caused that one and threw them up and into the outside wall. So the entire pack just came apart, coming down off turn number two. We're still having seriously relaxed yellow zone looking through this field and what's possibly changing. No, they won't be coming to pit road this time. Oh, some of them may be thinking, considering, but it looks like Max Steinmeier will be the first driver eliminated as we get the one to go this time by. So 43 laps to go in this race. As we get ready to go green. Rowe, Trafari, Page, and Burroughs lined up. We already have our first elimination of the night.
Hold on. Some drivers seem to have hit it. I think it may be Will Shack out of this race. Wow. Will Shack came to pit road as a strategy and gives Doug Newbigging and Max Steinmeier life. Will Shack, the first driver eliminated. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to go back green. It was supposed to be Max Steinmeier, but his pit stall was before the start finish line. And from what we're hearing, he is out of this race. Rowe, Trafari, Burroughs, and Page. What is planned to be the last restart in this game mode, back underway. Wrecking back half of the field, we stay green. That's gonna be all on them. But the race is on up front. Row into turn one. Keats, Connor, Trafari at bay, Burrows on the inside. He's just wanting to look to make something work, James Thurston. Right, just stuck in the middle of this pack. Jafari to the back end, Page in the third, Burroughs back to fourth, Walker, Champagne, Barbagallo. We'll come back to the start finish line, and with 41 laps to go, Rowe will lead that lap. Douglas New Bigging out. This is the battle for the last transfer. Riker Byram, Zach Gold. Zach Gold will be the third driver eliminated from this shootout style elimination. Race from the leaders. Sean Rose did a great job of keeping himself at bay, but you have to remember, at some point, there will be green flag pit stops. Burroughs, Walker, looking, peeking, questioning, Thurston. Way wide to the outside of turn three. He's gonna get the run here on Kevin Champagne. But for most of the guys up front that have winning in their eyes, they're thinking, I'll give a spot here, I'll give a spot there. This is a strategy race. He's not going to throw another caution. We don't have to worry about what's going on in the back end. But for all Lane Sanders, his time will come to a rest. He will be finishing in the 40th position. Lane Sanders eliminated from race one. Battle for the lead. And just joining on in, as we say hello, welcome. It's Eliminator live on NR Night in America. Happy April Fool's Night in America. Quick rundown, every lap a driver gets eliminated and it's the driver that is sitting last on the racetrack. Well, we're 40 laps into this race. Lane Sanders, Zach Gold, Doug Newbigging, and Will Shack are gone. Miranda Rose will be fighting Carlos Ortiz as the drive to survive still looks alive for the driver towards the back end. The fight for the lead is on. That's the thing, you're not gonna get this style of game modes every night in NR Night in America. We're only doing it because A, high driver demand for it. They said, let's do something interesting. It's April Fools. You're getting ready to go out to Bristol to go call a race. Let's have fun and then have a regular NR Night on Tuesday. I said, I agree, that sounds great. But what it's doing is, it's changing everything out. Miranda Rose in that five machine. Out here at Pocono, Carlos Ortiz. Joseph Tucker, Christian Delgado, the three on the bubble of concern, but for old Sean Rowe, it's lights out up front. Tafari to the outside has never won a race in NR Night in America. We're looking to go in and get his first in one of the wackier races. Do you think this is wacky? Get ready. We are going truck racing on a dirt road. Oh, what around to the inside, Jason Beckman. 
slams the inside wall, keeps it covered, but will lose all that track position that he had. And if he wants to stay alive for at least the top 20, he's going to have to overcut the leaders. Strategy is going to be big. Most of the guys outside the top 15. If they want to win, they're going to have to overcut. They're going to have to go a two-tire stop, maybe just gas and go. The front runners have to keep this in their sight lines, at least in their remembrance. Because you hate to go ahead and put yourself in a chance of risk. McConaughey looking for a move. Battle up front, Connor Tafari. A newcomer to NR9 in America and has striking gold early on. Now he's just all over Sean Rowe. Those two have really pulled away. But I look back at River Page, Anthony Burroughs, and James Thurston, I start thinking, why aren't they up there? We know Burroughs has the speed. Thurston and Page do as well. Are they saving tires? Are they saving fuel? What is the idea at hand? Update, Carlos Ortiz, Miranda Rose out with 37 laps to go. Joseph Tucker will join in that mix as well. Delgado, Riker, Byram, and Kerry Rogers. Tafari inside, no look. Row with the move, with an edge. Aiden Walker back in six. Kevin Champagne in seventh. Austin G. Johnson back in tenth. Jordan Herring, Nathan McLaughlin, Yahir Rodriguez, and Chad Hornets. This is the middle ground. The, the middle of the sandwich, should we say. They're not having the speed to go up there and compete for the win, but they're not back in the risk zone, which is about 30th on back. That would be Josh Berry, Tobias Matheson, Austin Mitchell and a couple other machines. They're in the area where they know they could stay alive off strategy. Tafari looking to the bottom. No look, 36 laps to go. I'm loving what Burroughs and Thurston are doing here. They're still in that zone to stay smart, stay consistent. Burroughs, Thurston, Aiden McConaughey back there in ninth. Chad Hornish, James Thurston. Connor Tafari to the back end of Sean Rowe. They look to that outside lane. Rose just able to keep him covered. Oh, Sean Rowe off the nose of the 48. Back across into the middle of the pack. And that's how quickly things can change from looking like a favorite to win the Eliminator game mode. Back to 26 and at risk of being eliminated. Unbelievable. Josh Berry, Zachary Steely. Wheel to wheel, crossing over. River Page, new race leader from Pocono. Remember, they have damage healing on, so this will prevent them from getting a DNF. And it's only enabled for the first two races, round three and possibly round four, if we get 300 likes on the stream, will be Technically, your regular scheduled NR night in America, but still GT3 racing on an oval. A big callback to the early days of this YouTube channel. Riker Byram, Kerry Rogers, Christian Delgado, Al. Starshevek will sit in the 33rd position and will be the next driver eliminated. Austin Mitchell on the bump. Next now in line. Now, if I'm looking at these guys up front, I'm thinking, okay, let's not turn each other. <laughs> let's not turn each other at all. Because I'd hate 
to be in a position where I'm going from, hey, I got a shot at winning this entire game mode. This is a fun, exciting game mode, completely different from whatever you've tried on iRacing, to, oh no, this game mode that I just called exciting is now gonna get me out of the race. And you can basically see the top three, top four, top five are all within arm's length of each other, just nose to tail, crossing the start finish line. Johnson in ninth. And how did Max Steinmeier survive for this long? No idea. He was supposed to be eliminated when that caution came out, but since Will Shack came to pit road, well, he got a lifeline. Max Steinmeier is not for the 21st position. A real class move to keep the game mode alive for him. Now, he was someone that played NASCAR the game 2011. You know it's never over until it's truly over. Aiden Walker in the outside wall. James Thurston, Anthony Burroughs, battle for second. Page below that yellow line and money stop, money stop, money stop. I continue to speak on it. When is it gonna come into play? Is it going to come into play? Let's go dial up someone that is off tracking this event to give us a better understanding of what's going on. Check that, he's not in the Discord server. He is uh, hanging out and waiting around. We'll keep an eye on what exactly is going down and what's keeping us at play with Josh Kenyon who is in this race. Josh, it's exciting out there. What's it looking like? Uh, it's very scary because uh, I think the cut line is uh, gaining up on you. Yeah, it's very much gaining up on you. You're saying 23rd, but can you make it to the end on fuel? We actually cannot. Oh, no. that's big. So what's the strategy call? I've been speaking about, oh, they're oh, spinning they're in, front. in front of me. They're right in front of me. Hold on. Okay. Gets to the inside of Beckman. Let's talk about it. Undercut, overcut, just going in for tires, maybe just going in for fuel, depending on how you save it, right sides only. Do you keep that in mind as a driver that's outside of the sandwich? You're getting towards that red, that red zone and that worrying possibility of being bumped. Yeah, I think uh, people that actually have a shot here, people should start thinking about that, but I, I really don't think that they They're very far ahead, so I'm just trying to survive right now. I'm not exactly sure what the strategy would be there. It's because if you just come around and you're coming out of there, you're in last, you're picking your slaps. Well, that's the big thing, too. If you stay out long enough, if someone does an undercut or a short pit, you can take them out. We've already talked about that here tonight on the show. Good happen. We're gonna let you go so you can go ahead and focus up. Good luck. Josh Kenyon, ladies and gentlemen, he's bowing towards the back half of this field, and you can already hear the excitement in his voice. He loves this style, this uniqueness, because a couple things. You know you're most likely not gonna get him for a very long time again in NR Night in America, even though it seems very popular and exciting. But the strategies you have to play, you have to play against the gimmicks. You don't very much like the gimmicks as a driver if you're towards the back half of the field, but if you're up front, you're, you gotta keep in mind. If I want to pit right now and I know I'll be good to go to the end, I'll be bumped out by Tobias Matheson, who's sitting 28th now on the bump, and Ash Ridge possibly in 27th. It's very interesting to see, once again, earlier in this race, Sean Rowe was out there leading laps. Matter of fact, he led the most laps of this race up to this point. He is on the cusp, sitting in the 26th position. Let's give you a rundown as we watch the racing up front. And who has been eliminated? Will Shack, Duncan Bigging, Gold, Sanders, Miranda Rose, Carlos Ortiz, Joseph Tucker, Christian Delgado, Kerry Rogers, Riker Byram, RJ Starsevic, Austin Mitchell, Zachary Steeler, uh, Steely, Josh Berry, that is for the 30th position, Cooper Phillips, and now Tobias Matheson will say goodnight here from Pocono. He will finish in the 28th position, but it's all River Page up front leading this field. Kevin Champagne back and forth. Connor Trafari back in fifth. Remember, he had that incident earlier on. Well, he is still very much in play for this win. Aiden Walker lined up behind him. He sits six. I like what's going on here with Barbagallo. He's someone that I think could come out a winner in this. He's gone to Pocono before. He's watched races here. He gets excited when we come on out. 
but can he stay alive? Can he drive and stay out in front? Well, right now he's two and a half seconds back to River Page, two and a half seconds back to Anthony Burroughs. But once again, strategy, strategy, strategy. It will be in effect. Remember Jason Beckman went around earlier in this race? He is now out. Ash Ridge sits 26. Sean Rose sits 25th. You're not seeing a lot of battling for that final spot. Well, maybe in, until the next couple of laps, because here's the battle for the 22nd position. That's Josh Kenyon. That's Ethan DeWeld, and that's Justin Connor. They sit 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Sean Rose gonna need a wreck out of them to stay alive. Ash Ridge, well, he looked to be eliminated within the first couple laps of this race, I think, with him falling back and staying with a checkered flag and a top 26. It's not that bad of a run. Uh, up front, Anthony Burroughs starts dialing in River Page. James Thurston, Kevin Champagne, Jafari Delgado, uh, check that, should we say Barbagallo, Aiden Walker. With 26 laps to go, all these drivers are tightly knit together, but River Page has shown to be the strong one at hand. I continue to watch this bout, it's now for 24th. Josh Kenyon got put in the outside wall, and it's gonna be the Aflac machines going for that final spot. Sean Rowe to the inside. Kenyon on the outside, and say goodnight, Josh Kenyon. Lunches in deep and throws in the towel. Sean Rowe fights back for a top 25 finish. And he catches Justin Connor into well. You'll see the 99 disappear in the back end. Dewell, Connor, Sean Rowe, three drivers. One will be eliminated this lap. You can see you look for the fights for positions. This is for fifth. Barbagallo heading to turn three. Rolls the center. Back to the gas, looks to the outside of the 48. I think Trafari just used up a lot of his tires early on. He would be a prime contender to go to victory lane, but right now he's gonna need some type of strategy. Sean Rowe, 24th. What a fight back. At one point was back to the 26th, 27th position, but he will be out for Pocono. Now it's Justin Carter versus Ethan DeWeld for that transfer spot. Now this is gonna be great. Because every spot matters. Even if you get eliminated, you want to say, hey, at least I finished in the top 25 as the 48 nearly turned the 99 up the track. In the last two laps, it's been a number 99 getting eliminated. Do the Ford machines go three for three? Well, it's got to make something work. Oh, he wall rides. And he will be automatically eliminated. Wow. DeWeld is out. Justin Connor stays alive. After the NR9 America rules are still very much in effect. Up front, River Page, Anthony Burroughs, Kevin Champagne, all on a tire saving strategy. Trafari, I think he's gonna have to come to pit road a lot earlier than everyone else. He's gonna have to go for a two tire stop and just enough fuel to make it to the end if he wants to stay from being eliminated. The only thing is Justin Connor, Chad Hornish, he's up and into the outside wall. Wall riding has been illegal in NR Night in America since November 2021. If you wanna know why it's been illegal since then, Look no further than James Thurston at the National Fairgrounds Speedway. He wall rode to win, and he actually took the win away from Alexander Cranky. Somebody asked for me to take the win away. I said, I can't take the win away. It's a rule that wasn't in effect. Race three that night, it became in effect. And who would have thought a whole year later since that incident, Ross Chastain would pull the Hail Melon, and NASCAR would also outlaw the rule, or should we say outlaw the move, as the rule is now in effect. This is all River Page up front in Team Ford. 
having a daydream. Chased by a Chevy, make it two, make it three with a Toyota back to fifth. Two TRDs up inside that top seven, but some drivers just can't seem to get out of the wall. And that's gonna be Aiden Walker. Up and into the fence. James Thurston on the outside. Chad Hornish. And yes, he is related to Sam Hornish. So close to a top 20 outing, but is on track to be the next eliminated. Max Steinmeier, I mean, this is some March Madness stuff out of him. He was supposed to be the first round exit, the 43 driver to be eliminated. He has now cracked the top 19. What's a college basketball team that's related to Max Steinmeier? I mean, this is just unbelievable stuff. And he's got Gavin Austin in tow. This is the three car battle as the top 20 now remain with 21 laps remaining. And you want to make that sweet 16. There's certain objectives you want to make. First one, don't be the first to eliminate it. Well, Will Shack was that. Second, get outside the top 40, then the top 30, then the top 25, top 20. Make the sweet 16, make it to the top 10, the elite eight, the final four and then possibly winning it all. Danny Switzer sits 20th, and what a great run by him in Eliminator. He's gonna slam the outside wall with the wall ride, which would automatically outlaw him. He is out. Max Steinmeier from 43rd to 19th. He's battling Gavin Austin for the next transfer spot. But oh, Barbacolo's on pit road. Barb the undercut. Couldn't make it on tires, couldn't make it on fuel. Dominic Barbacola with the pitch strategy may have just put the nail in the coffin for him. It depends on who comes in this time. Burroughs stays out. Kevin Champagne stays out. James Thurston stays out. There's so much skill with this game mode. It's not just a gimmick where it's luck-based, it's strategy-based, skill-based, and very much being in the right position at the right time. And for old Barbagallo, as the crowd comes to its feet, will be out in the 19th position. Max Steinmeier, life is still with him. In Toyota, he sits 18th. Gavin Austin sits in 17th. But when do they start coming to pit road? Because that's when it's gonna turn into a, a big monopoly of drivers taking four tires, just fuel, maybe two tires. This is once again a game mode that has never been completed on iRacing. So there's no real book or game plan to go off of. But it sure is exciting, I'll give it back. It is fascinating to watch what's going on, including this top three battle. Gavin Austin, Max Steinmeier, lunge to turn three. Austin shoves him up the track. Track race to the line. Steinmeier in the wall. Gavin Austin joins in the 17th. And the little team that could have PBR, or should we say the big team that could, and should have been eliminated right away. Out in 18. Vince Gucci, the last driver into the Sweet 16. Gavin Austin, 17. This is awesome. And then you got fuel strategy still to play a role. Because someone's gonna have to come to pit road. And it's gonna come down to that. Barbagallo knew he couldn't make it all the way. He was hoping if he just came in quickly, there'd be some type of life for him. Looking on back, Gavin Austin had a great fight for that 17th position, but 17th is what he will get. He's out. Vincent Gucci in the 16th. When do you get to pit road? Page Burroughs, Champagne, one, two, three. It's exciting. It's challenging. 11th, or should we say 9th, 11 seconds back. They're in a 12 second range where if they pit now, obviously they'd have something work out pretty well for them towards the end of the race, but you can't really undercut knowing that if you 
cross the line still in last, you're still out. So the idea for some of these guys at the undercut, maybe do it by a lap, because you then have to hope for someone coming to pit road next time around. For Vincent Gucci and Team Red Bull, it is good night from Pocono. Richard Cherry in 15th, next on the bump. Yahir Rodriguez in 14th. Jordan Herring in 13th, have a night, kid. Yola Hankins, Joseph Goff, then you have Nathan McLaughlin, Michael Gudger, Austin G. Johnson, Aiden McConaughey, Connor Jafari, that's six. Aiden Walker in fifth. What is Anthony Burroughs going to do? He sits in the second position with 16 laps to go. River Page, the lunge to pit road. He had just gotten caught for speeding. That's exactly what the driver in 15th needs. More coming in, James Thurston, Aiden Walker, McLaughlin. Cherry, he's got an overcut, you gotta stay on the track. And that's exactly what he's gonna do. Yahir Rodriguez bumped out of Pocono. Wow. That is awesome, great move when everything looked to be lost. To stay out on the track and give you at least one more lap of life. Now it's McLaughlin on the bump, McConaughey on the bump. The driver's coming in for an undercut. They're going for that big win scenario. But some of these other drivers look to be running out of gas. Johnson on the bottom, I think he's out. Burroughs coming in, Kevin Champagne staying out. Trafari coming in, Gudger coming in. It's gonna be tight to see who those last drivers are. There's 13 left. And it's gonna come down to what looks to be Jordan Herring, no. River Page is still in 14th. He had a time penalty. River Page had a time penalty. I believe he sped on entry. And that's twice now. In this race, the leader has lost due to an incident either on track or coming to pit road. River Page will be eliminated. Jordan Herring looks to have life. Well, hold on now, we're looking, we're peeking. And it's to make sure the guys on pit road cross the start finish line. There's Jordan Herring. Here's River Page out of this race. Kevin Champagne, he stayed out the longest. He's now on pit road. It's gotta be a two tire stop. It's gotta be two tires to put some gas in it, get to the end. Heck, even if he just put a splash and go, because he has to get out in front of 12th and 13th. Here's Anthony Burroughs. Here's James Thurston. Connor Jafari, who looked to be way out of it. Now back in the fourth position. Burroughs to the line. He'll be your race leader. Kevin Champagne, easy in, easy out. I believe he had right side tires go up. He'll have a big chance at possibly winning this race. And oh, Richard, what a try for this underdog. Up to 13th in an elimination style event. I mean, he was another one that looked to have his back against the wall. And Richard Cherry will be eliminated. The final 12 drivers are racing on the track. Joseph Goff, Austin G. Johnson, Jordan Herring, Keola Hankins, Red Zone battle now for seventh. Michael Gunter on the bottom. Nathan McLaughlin on the outside. Oh, Guga. Outside wall. How about this? Kevin Champagne closing in to James Thurston. Johnson will be on the bump. Goff will be eliminated. Joseph Goff out of Pocono. And this will be the battle for that transfer spot. It's gonna be Herring and Austin. And it's interesting, because when you get kicked, you're thinking to yourself, oh man, we had it. What? Why did I have to end in this position? But going into the top 12 of 43 drivers, it's like a battle royale, like a war zone, Fortnite. 
PUBG style event that you have on right now. Yes, you didn't win, you didn't get the glory, but you beat the rest and you beat some of the best in this situation for a lot of these underdogs like Jordan Herring to get this far and now lose it what looks to be in the final corner to Austin G. Johnson. You're, you can still walk away with your head held high. Ladies and gentlemen, the final 10 drivers battle for second. Champagne of the inside, Thurston on top. Switch back inside for the 29. McLaughlin, now 30 seconds back, Thurston in the wall. He's got to stay somewhat close to Kevin Champagne. But I just don't think it's going to work out. Kevin has a lot more freshies. Or should we say has a lot more fresh rubber compared to Thurston. But can the 10 catch Burroughs with 10 laps to go? He has three seconds to make up time. I think he's going to have a shot at it. McLaughlin. Round of applause, the top 10 gave it his all. Austin G. Johnson has been on the bump now twice. He is rallying tonight. Next up for him to possibly pass is Keola Hankins. It has been an amazing viewing experience, including now that you know the top two are on a different strategy. They could have just undercut very early and lose a lot of track position because they can't be last. And that's easy to think as you think, oh, last is just 43rd. No, when they came in the cycle, Last was going to be 20th, 18th, 16th, 15th, and they were still very much tightly knit together. But Kevin Champagne, 3 2 back, was originally a 3 4 back. Now looking to get under a 2 9. I think he's got a shot with nine laps to go to catch Anthony Burroughs. Johnson in ninth. What a try for him. It's a top 10 finish, but it will end up in a, a disheartening way. Keola Hankins, another underdog that has fought his way in eight. Michael Gudger, Aiden McConaughey, six, seventh. This will be a battle for position. Some of these guys not thinking top five, final four, and then definitely going for the win. Kevin Champagne has gotten quicker and quicker. Newsflash, very much quicker over the last couple of laps. James Thurston up into the outside wall. I don't think he's gonna have anything for him. Anthony Burroughs, he's gonna have to drive and fight. The Champagne's just a little bit faster once again this time around, eight to go. Keola Hankins with the wall ride. I'm surprised so many drivers have done that. I know that's a desperation move, but it's illegal. And I think we've broken a record now for how many wall rides for kicks we've had just in one race. But this is a battle I'm gonna wanna watch right here. Aiden McConaughey, Michael Gudger. Now drivers were battling like it was the last lap for 20th when they knew they were gonna get eliminated. I bet for six, it's gonna get pretty dicey. Gudger to the outside. McConaughey on the bottom. Oh, he trying to squeeze him down in the tunnel turn. This is gonna be a fight all the way back to the start finish line. Gutcher on top, sends in a prayer. McConaughey on the bottom, drag race to the start finish line. Gutcher out duels him for six, McConaughey eliminated. Now that's what I'm talking about, that's the drive to stay alive. And even if it is just for one more lap, six, is a better finishing position than seven. Champagne, two six back, still closing and at an immense rate over Anthony Burroughs. He just needs to be within half a second to make a bold move on the final lap. Gudger, top six, round of applause. But if you're gonna beat the best, you may have to be the best at it. Six to go. For the ones that are wondering, yes, this is a Battle Royale style event. It's called Elimination. No, there's no bots in this. Real Driver 60 entered. 
43 took the green flag. You're down to the final six. Now the final five. Aiden Walker. Will be next on the bomb. Outside wall. Eliminated. Connor Tafari. This will be his best finish in an NR Night in America race. And this is a big challenge to win. This is a huge challenge to win. But for these drivers to be in this position, it's just outstanding. Thurston in third. I don't think he's going to catch him. It's going to come down to Kevin Champagne and Anthony Burroughs. Unless something goes for a miss. And a great strategy call here by Kevin. Down to the tunnel turn. Battle for third. It's all over. The final four drivers. Connor Tafari, James Thurston, Kevin Champagne, Anthony Burroughs. And then, as it was in 2006 for the Piston Cup, we're down to three. The big three. Thurston, Champagne, and Anthony Burroughs. Now we are here in the top two. We'll be able to race back to the checkered flag. James Thurston is looking like a miss. Riding on with Kevin Champagne. One seven back. Three to go. And they're gonna save a lot. They're not gonna eliminate James Thurston this time by because they're early on the cycle. Oh no, for Kevin Champagne to make up a second and change in three laps. I mean, that's gonna be a, a tight, tight thing to do. He's run a completely different line. He's going all the way back to the outside, trying to just generate some type of forward momentum. Burroughs is the race leader. In a world of his own, he played the strategy right up to this point. He just needs to see the checkered flag. With two laps to go, there will be two. And they'll have two laps to duel back to the finish. No more eliminations. Two laps for two drivers. Champagne and Burroughs. Down into turn two. Hey, he's rolling out of the throttle. You don't even hear him in the gas. But Kevin Champagne is still on the loud pedal. Trying to make something work late in this run. It's gonna come down to this. Burroughs goes wide. In turn three, Sara Blanca wants to go in elimination at Pocono. Two drivers, one lap. One second the difference. Burroughs. Shaking the rear end. Kevin Champagne looking for one last heave to the tunnel turn. And a turn three. Champagne goes wide. Anthony Burroughs. 
will try to survive in the elimination game mode. Anthony Burroughs victorious from Pocono. And burns it down automatically on the start finish line. That was very interesting. It was very, very interesting. The idea was, can we get a gimmick that takes skill, is appreciated by others, and you have to adjust your strategy, and it's not off luck. For Anthony Burroughs, he didn't look to be the favorite in the opening laps. Here's the favorite at the checkered flag. And our night in America, fueling victories all year long. And at the left side of your screen, you'll be able to see where they have all finished. Unbelievable drive, unbelievable race. Uh, that was just amazing. Let's go talk to your race winner. After this, don't go anywhere. Truck racing, where all can come back to the checkered flag. That will be at a dirt road course. That may be race of the night. What did y'all think of this? April Fools Night in America. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, 300 likes. We will see race number four. Let's go talk to Anthony Burroughs. Delgado Company. That was awesome. All right. The goal was to have them race a certain way, and they very much did. And it's unfortunate because you knew pit strategy was gonna be. You knew pit strategy was gonna be a big talking point of this. River Page, I believe, lost this race because he sped on pit road. It was literally that. Waiting on AB, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Burroughs wins the first game mode in NR9 in America. The viewers will be able to vote on what oval we go for the GT3. But that was something indeed. Burroughs has yet to go ahead and join on in. So let's go ahead and uh, drop our way back to Nashville, Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen. After an exciting race, what did you all think? I'm going to go ahead and give you my two thoughts on it. I like it. It's something that we're not going to do a lot of. Mainly because this is really meant for Halloween and April Fools. And last Halloween, we did the same thing. We're like, okay, what? let's make a scary race and let's go full fog at Talladega. And this was very much like that. April Fools is a gimmicky day. We thought, hey, let's just do things different. If you're looking for regular scheduled Internet in America races, that will be tomorrow uh, at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, as long as I'm not hit by a tornado. That seems like a joke, but it's not a joke because I am in an enhanced risk area tomorrow. So keep up to date on us with Twitter and, or should we say X, and Instagram of all the cool things and updates that will be coming just in case things do get delayed, but we still plan on taking the green flag uh, tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, well, round one is done. We're heading to round number two. This is one that's gonna be very, very exciting. We're going truck racing on a dirt road course for race number two. It will be a 45 lap race as well, as I don't think we even struck an hour into this stream. Yes, it'll be a 45 lap race, and we will be ready to go back green flag racing. Truck Night in America coming soon. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go green flag racing. So we had the Wild West, which is a dirt road course, and it will show off the best of the best, I can guarantee you. It'll be showing off the best of the best because we did the test earlier and we thought, wow, this is amazing. This is fantastic. Let's see how this runs in an actual Enter Night in America race. For what it looked like, most drivers were more excited for this one than Elimination. 
Most viewers seem to be more excited about this one than elimination. And some said it should have headlined. Well, we are hearing max drivers that can enter are 40, and that's exactly what we'll be sticking with. Session is up. Password is IDK. We're going racing from Wild West Motorsports Park. Let's go ahead and chime in a driver that I believe has a great understanding of this combo before we go green. Uh, not Jason Beckman, not Josh Kenyon. We're looking to see if James Thurston is here. We know some of these guys are in their own private chats. Uh, Delgado, Barbagallo was in there. You know, let's go ahead and chime in with Beckman and hear exactly what he's got to say. Beckman, it's a John. You got a copy. Beckman, Hello? it's a John. You got a copy. Yo, what's up, John? All right, right. We're heading to race number two. You tested this combo out. First, give me your opinions on elimination and then give me your opinions on uh wild west motorsports park okay elimination was fun as hell uh even though i got wrecked like three times didn't really get a good finish just spectating it like the battle between gavin and steinmeier that we were all laughing our asses off in vc um and then wild west motorsports park it's um unique the car bounces up and down at the end of the jumps. You know, suspension's not really meant for stuff so like that. So originally, I'm gonna but... I'm gonna stop you right there because originally when I said I was gonna do this, I did not know it had jumps, and I was like, uh oh, this is gonna be bad. And this, a lot of you guys said, no, 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 no. It's not like Monster Jam. It's like more like a trophy truck race. And we watched it like, wow, it, it's a trophy truck race. That's literally what it is. It's basically a trophy truck race with the NASCAR feel to it, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, uh, the Pro 2 lights in iRacing go there all the time. Uh, it's always a good time in the official races. And these trucks, they don't drive bad if you learn how to have some throttle control in the corners. Um, get the thing turned in. After that, it's smooth sailing. Well, tonight is very much a unique night. We're just going to go ahead and throw that out there. You look at how things are. It's not a gimmick as in this is a roll on a roulette wheel and... If you bet on red, you win, right? This is more of... And by the way, there's only four turns here. They're only counting four turns on this dirt track. But the way things look and the way things feel, it's a completely different strategy than you would have with NR Night in America. You knew, and you saw with Barbara Gall, he pit way too early and got eliminated. Some of these drivers made mistakes. What's the strategy that obviously is not like any other NR Night in America race at Wild West part that you've learned through testing? Uh, stay up front, really, and don't get tapped. As soon as you get one nose in your quarter, even if it's unintentional from the other guy, it's super easy to loop the thing around, and once you loop it around, it's hard to get going again. These things have no grip, and if you're going from a standstill, it's impossible to gain speed. So basically, just keep your momentum going, uh, keep your slides smooth, um, and it's surprisingly difficult to keep these things straight on the straights, so uh, keep it under control there. Well, we're here. We have arrived. We're going to give some drivers some time to practice. Was it tough at first when you got in there? I mean, we have a custom setup for it, which is great news. It's not necessarily tough, it's just uh, the getting used to it bit. Once you figure out how to make the car slide, once you figure out uh, the line around the track, how to take the jumps, then after that, all it is is learning the racecraft around the trucks. Well, hey, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Testing is underway. We're gonna give you guys six minutes of practice, so that will be perfect time to give all of the viewers as much information as possible about this track. Good luck. All right, thank you, John. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to go green. I gotta ask you all, the viewers back at home, some were telling me that the quality of the stream was off. For me, it's absolutely pitch perfect, but let me know how the stream quality is down in the chat below. I wanna say thank you to everyone that has tuned on in. Goff, Hankins, Johnson. So this is Wild West Motorsports Park. Yes, a dirt road course, you got that right. There's jumps in it. Uh, we have to put damage healing on to keep the suspensions alive. And it's interesting, but if you watch Rallycross, if you watch uh, Supercross, Monster Energy Supercross, if you watch Trophy Truck Racing, it's like that. This isn't Roller Derby. This isn't anything like Mario Kart. It's more or less just a different strategy that so many guys have to take as you may get turned like that. This is just turn two of the track. You're going uphill, you're going down, you're going left, right. There's not a lot of control of your truck when racing around, 
Miranda Rose, Josh Harper, some of the drivers just going out there. It's 40 will enter, 40 will race down into turn one. Some of these guys blinking, some of these guys trying at different lines, different things. James Thurston, he was one of the best trucks out there from what we saw. He's just out there practicing right now, getting a feel for it. Now watch his hands on the left side of your screen. Has to go over that bump, you gotta center it. Right away, you gotta be thinking about turn one. I think turn one's gonna be a huge make or break for a lot of these drivers. You gotta go downhill. Yes, only four turns, but it's the elevation changes that are the big problems. And you gotta drive it like a trophy truck. That's literally what it's about. Drive it like a trophy truck. You don't have the suspension like a trophy truck, but we're combating that by having damage healing on the suspensions. But steering is gonna be tough. It's gonna be really hard to hold on to. Right sides down here in the cushion. Some guys just trying to hold on. Some guys just trying to get a feel for it. James Thurston, a lot to handle. There's Elaine Sanders, Joseph Tucker, Dominic Barbagallo, Riker Byron. It's gonna be a fun race. That's the best part about this. You know you're gonna have one heck of a night. We will have cautions if we need it, but it also will be on a relaxed standpoint. Let's get ready to go green. Matthew White, Riker Byram, Aaron Shugol, Aiden Walker will all have their fun in the sun. I said it was gonna be about five minutes. Uh, it looks like we'll be advancing most likely right away. Justin Connor, Kenyon, Post, Barry, Newbigging, Ash Ridge, Josh Harper, and others getting ready to line up before we go green and continue to practice their parts, or should we say their trucks around this track. Daniel Mosteller, Austin G. Johnson, Harry Rogers, there's Mosteller. Demos rolling around. I want to say thank you to everybody that has worked their way out tonight for NR Night in America. So grateful for it. I can't wait to see you all Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. Jumps are gonna be big, they're gonna be, I wanna say even chaotic at some points. Let's get ready to go green. Let's see if we can also go out there and drag some guys in, hear what they've gotta say before we go ahead and drop the hammer. Let's go talk to Douglas New Big. Doug, it's a John, you got a copy. I got you, the John. How are you feeling about this? I don't know. Uh, it's definitely interesting, pretty fun. Um, I was one of the people that did not practice with this. Uh, it's definitely weird, I gotta say. Um, pretty random movement sometimes. They can kind of predict where it's gonna go, and then it just randomly will just jump. Uh, like going into the final turn and the first like turn. That's where the car is really kind of just random, I feel like. So. Oh, no. Well, hey, we are excited for it. Demos and a bunch of other guys in here. It's new, it's unique. I know every week we're talking about something new or unique. We, we've never done a dirt road course. We've never done a race with jumps. We've never done elimination. How was your opinion? What was your opinion on elimination? I mean, you were out pretty early. Uh, I made it really far. Uh, I was the second one out because uh, I got. Well, that the first work that happened, um, I was trying to not take Yuga, and then friggin' the guy behind me just ran me over. So I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna let that happen. So I just locked the brakes up, and just basically, I mean, everyone died. So I mean, I made sure that guy made die. You know, so. Well, hey, you've done Yuga four laps, or you've done a couple laps, should we say? Would you take us around this track for us? Oh God. <laughs> I'm driving it like I do with the Pro 4s here. Okay. I think that's so, what uh, most people are doing. I think that's the main yeah. goal on most of the drivers. 
Yeah, I got a bit of a sniffle, so sorry if I'm a little... Oh, God. Right, well, we're on your nose, my man. Walk me through this. There's only four turns, but, I mean, it is up, down, sideways, and you get some serious only air. Turns? Yeah, only four turns. You're passing turn two right yeah. now. Yeah, let me think about that. Yeah, so first gear right here, I, the way it sounds like I'm kind of shifting more than I should be. I like using first gear a lot, so... Uh, get it like third gear here. It feels like you never really go like above uh, third, kind of. RJ Cole jumping a ten dollar super chat. That's gonna help us out a ton. He said, "Imagine this IRL." Oh. Doug, can you imagine this IRL? Yeah, dude. Connor Jones would win. <laughs> yeah. All right, hey, first slack heading down to turn one. Uh, yeah, just down to the first here, and then my car just doesn't turn, so that's cool. Uh, it's probably not gonna get lap. Downhill uh, right here. Oh man, that's that's scary. But you gotta be hard on the gas. The turn oh, two. Yeah, really hard on the gas here. This corner here, back down to first, a little bit of gas, just enough to get us to rotate. This is I awesome. Have to go like back right up in the second, and then it doesn't shift because for some reason I don't know. I just suck again and shift, I guess. Now we're looking at 55 we second lap right times. It's only a 45 lap race, but I mean you're really handling this thing well. Yeah, somewhat. I mean, dirt race in real life kind of helps a little bit, but yeah, it, sure, it's you weird. Are dirt. Oh, man, that was a huge hit to the here. nose. <laughs> that nose almost oh, yeah. stuck in. Off turn four, back to the start finish line. What's the goal here? Keeping it straight? It's widening in here. I can hear you. You're struggling oh, with it. God. <laughs> No, oh, okay, this ain't loud. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> Douglas knew big game. All right, well, hang on. Well, look at the picture. Well, where did you qualify? Right? That's the real question. Seventh? Hey, that's seven. not bad. It's going down now, I think. But, hey, we got one. Well, I know what I'm doing now, at least. So, I mean, I think I get, like, I think I need to keep it in second for this one. So I'm dropping a first here. Like, all these tight corners, I'm dropping down a first. And then for this one, dear God. Man, well, you don't have to really difficult. worry about your suspension because we have suspension healing on for the suspensions itself. Yeah. Uh, does that save the truck a lot for you? I might imagine. I mean, I think if you do probably like one of these jumps, it probably explode. You know what I mean? Well, Real I was life, looking but... at it. The lap time is original 55. For whatever reason, you guys gained about two and two tenths on just testing alone. It could be the track state, honestly. I mean. Maybe the dirt's like warning better or something. I don't know. All right, well, hey, I gotta ask, have you ever trophy truck raced in person yet? No, because I'm not the rich. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way. I'm just talking about it, because you said you had dirt experience. <laughs> yeah, well, like oval stuff, I mean. You just never you know did. What? Dear God. Josh Berry's going around back there in 30th. Blaine Sanders, Harper. Real Josh What's Barry, the, by the way. What is the worry uh, heading into this race? Uh, the worry is probably going to be turn one. Um, monumental, the Clyde one, I think, going over there. Uh, it's definitely not going to be. We might need like an ambulance to get it on ready. Oh my gosh, this thing is. I think I'm going to drop the steering ratio down, let her notch. But yeah, that's like a, I think it's a handful, especially with my high force feedback that I'm running, and then a bigger wheel, I gotta say. I unironically think if you had like a Formula One wheel, I think it would honestly like work out really nicely. Really? Yes. It's, I don't know why, but I get that feeling. That seems interesting. I'm, I'm surprised you say that. Because you think a wheel would be... You know, you'd have more of an understanding of, you know, the every single inch and bump. Oh, it's gonna oh, be. Yeah, but I mean, it's weird because you can't really like. Yeah, you feel the bumps with this, but it's more of it just knocks out of your hand. I mean, for me at least, like, my wheels fly all over the place and the bumps kind of like make me fight it. Holy cow, man! I guess so. Those it's not like bumps, you'd be out of like... breath. Do you think 45 laps is too much for this? No, oh, it's fine. I, I have to have my thing up because I don't run four seats. I mean, I don't run uh, power steering real life in my dirt stuff. So this is like good arm training for me, honestly, more than anything. Why don't you run power steering? Um, more expensive? Uh, because, well, no, it's not expensive. It just makes it more driver dependent. I don't know. It, you can't feel as much if you have power steering, you know what I mean? Like the bumps and all that. If you, if you have power steering, it kind of just all kind of goes away. It's a really different way you have to drive it. It's weird. Well, hey, we're promoting this, Doug. You're a dirt driver. This is a unique race that this year has been nothing 
but Unique Races, you're a unique driver. Let's see if you'll go to victory lane. Uh, oh man, yeah, I need I need the big one to happen here. Oh my gosh, 16th. Yeah, I need the big one here to happen. Well, we will. Oh, looking at it, you guys are starting in the middle of turn three, so we're gonna go into one to go next time. By just so trucks know how to go through turn one, at least wheel to wheel before <laughs> no, we take will. the green flag. I, at least wheel to wheel. I have to just I, point that out. I think. I think someone's gonna go over like the first jump. I think they're gonna go dead sideways over it. I think we're gonna have a first flip like before the Don't first say that. Easily. <laughs> Don't say I guarantee that. it. I guarantee it. There's gonna be a track blocker going into turn one. Oh, I'd hate to see that. I'm calling it. It is gonna be the funniest thing in human history. It would not be the funniest thing. I would highly disagree. But <laughs> hey, this is the risk we run of trying new things, right? Hey, yeah, you know what? You but can't... we live for this. This is what we work for. This is what we work towards. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't, this are hurt to not try, you know what I mean? Especially on the day. Yeah, hey, might as well. All right, Doug, hey, listen, 45 laps, rock and roll, good luck. Yeah, thank you, man. Hopefully, I'll uh, see you around back up here soon. Douglas New Bigging, ladies and gentlemen, he's ready to ride it out. So are we. Kick the dust up just one more time and end our night in America. No, it's not on a dirt oval. It's on a dirt road course. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go green with the first dirt road course race in NR Night in America. Exciting. Rolling off next time by the one to go. So let's go ahead and say those magical words. God, speed, drivers, you are go for throttle up, and isn't this just the coolest thing you have seen all day? I mean, this by far is the coolest thing I've seen all day. But we're talking 40 trucks, all American muscle, multiple countries represented, and this is my vote to be uh, the side plot in Cars 4, honestly. <laughs> this is really, really cool. But we're going green this time by, ladies and gentlemen, Workman. Check that. Walker, Thurston, Trafari, Shugol, Austin, Gucci, Gavin Austin, Matthew White, Keola Hankins, and Barbagallo. Ready to duel it out in the Wild West. Off turn number three, and head into turn number four. This is what you've all come to see. Beautiful virtual crowd on hand. Ready to rock and roll. That pace truck will dive on the pit road and get out of harm's way. As we go ahead and for the first time in our night in America, light the fuse from the dirt road course at Wild West. Thurston advantage, turn one. The tiptoeing down a gear, one spinning. Two, three trucks into the wall, the brace for turn two. And Walker's very smooth with it down the inside. He's gonna give Thurston the run for the money. Connor Tafari. Uphill off three. And through the wedges. Four Toyota Chevrolet, three manufacturers on display in the top three. Thurston a mistake into four. Opens the tour to the inside for Connor Tafari. They're gonna slam it shot and James Thurston leads lap one. Just see how spread out they all got. Jafari, two truck lengths back on the straightaway and through the humps, but right on the doorstep through the corners. Looked inside of two, will be outside now inside of three. And he did the switch back move, but Thurston's just able to keep him right at bay. 
They just hear the truck trying to get all the RPMs up, trying to get all that power. Rolling back uphill. Aiden Walker there in third. Thurston, wide, battle for the lead. Jafar to the inside. Thurston to the outside. Turning left to go right. He leads another 43 to go. Walker's riding the tail as well. Don't count him out. Oh, gets in the side of the four. Three trucks under a blanket to turn two. Kevin Austin's right there as well. Jafari slides the rear end. We'll lose both those spots. Went from going for the lead to dropping on back. Thurston Walker. Austin in the third. And Aiden Walker is now on the north step there in the four. And some parts of these tracks have just been so tough to maintain. They see Thurston struggles down through one and two, but he's so much quicker down to three and four. When you think he's gonna lose the spot to the center, he just drives down off exit. And has so much to hold on to. Double trucks already down pit road. 20 took the green flag. Uh, check that. 40 took the green flag. 39 still racing. 20 are shown on the left side of your screen. Brandon Walker, he's starting to lose a little bit of distance to the James Thurston machine. Looking around this track, here's Austin G. Johnson, Vincent Gucci. Back there with Matthew White, Douglas Newbing, and we talked with him earlier. He's struggling yet fighting with Christian Delgado. Delgado will go to the inside and lock that in. Matter of fact, Barbara Gala will just get the two for one special. And we're slam into the side of the Chevrolet. Landon Gentry, 16. Justin Connor, 18. Riker Byram, Joseph Tucker, Ash Ridge, Josh Kenyon. Yahir Rodriguez. Going at it, Connor Tafari to the outside of Kevin Austin. It's back to turn two. Oh, turns the forward line. Aiden Walker stuck with lap traffic. With 41 laps to go. I'd be worried about that 12. Oh, completely out of the gas. Austin back to the inside. He, he's thinking about getting two on. You can just see how aggressive he is. There's the back end of the Toyota. But his Ford will not see the fight much longer. Aiden Walker in a second. James Thurston, still your race leader. He's led most of this race. But so far, the question of concern is how long can he keep this up for? He's got a truck to the inside that is off and sitting there and will actually pull its way to pit road, so we'll stay green. You have an Austin back and forth. He goes around and may have just clipped another truck. No, that's two lap machines going around in the middle of the field. Jason Beckman will get through. Vincent Gucci. Still looking to just hold on to something. There's Gavin in fourth. There's Trafari in third. Aiden Walker back in second, but still about a second the difference. Now he isn't too far on dirt, including the dirt track like this. A second and a half is more like three or four tenths back on an intermediate with the Xfinity series. For the difference, you're looking through this field, there's really a battle for ninth. Barbagallo found his way around Kerry Rogers. Douglas Newbigging finds his way around Matthew White. Back to the outside. And the big thing is you heard Doug huffing and puffing. That was just during qualifying. You know the force feedback is going to be absolutely insane for all these drivers in this race. Who has the, should we say, the breath, the energy, to go the distance because Hayden Walker has now closed in pretty well on James Thurston. We've had races in NR9 in America where some drivers are saying, can we just take five minutes? But like, let's just wait five minutes so I can take a breath before we go to the next race because sometimes it is absolutely grueling. Move. Tafari to the inside. 
Down to the 77. Fighting and clawing. Their way through this pack, there's Ada Walker. He's right on the doorstep again there at the James Thurston Ford. Thurston led so many laps, at least in the opening, but he may be running a risk of losing it, not just to one truck, but to two. In the first opening laps, it was three trucks under a blanket, three different manufacturers. It's back like that again with 38 laps to go. He's fighting just a loose race truck. He's going left, right, up, down. He is struggling big time. That being the four, Thurston parks it in the middle of turn one. Walker wanted inside. He has Chad Hornish now dead ahead of him. Looks to the outside of two. Wanted to drive off. Hornish parked it. Thurston able to pull away back to a seven. Trafari back in third. Gavin Austin back and forth. Daniel Mosteller, Austin G. Johnson, and Vincent Gucci. Jason Beckman, Dominic Barbagallo, Doug Newbiggie, Matthew White. All fighting, but it's still James Thurston leading the way. A proud long because Walker has been there every single chance he's gotten in sector two. That's turns three and four. One and two, it's really just a monopoly, it feels like. One second, it's advantage James Thurston. The next second, it's advantage Adam Walker. He even throw maybe even an advantage. Trafari in there sitting in that third position. Gavin Austin, four seconds back. He's even gaining on this top three. Trafari, wheel to wheel with the lap truck. Walker, uh, one of the inside. This is where it's been his daydream. Turns three and turns four with lap trucks pending. I think the lap truck has really uh, hurt the edge there on James Thurston as well. I say that as he's leading, but every time he comes down off turn number four, he has some type of trouble. Contact with the 22 and hands the lead to Aiden Walker. Oh my. Couple trucks out of this race. But after contact, it puts James Thurston now on the back end. Carlos Ortiz. One of the drivers also struggling. He made contact there with Matthew Post. Couple trucks around, turn one. But it is towards the back half, 35 to go, three under a second. Trafari to the inside, it's a second. TRD, what a drive. It looked to be a four dominance early on. Thurston trying to pressure the nine into a disadvantage or maybe a mistake, puts himself in his own mistake. Jafari, seven the difference, stay in a walker. Thirty-four laps to go. Six four. Six three the difference. It looks to be go time here. In a matter of moments for some of these other drivers. And what should I be saying? It seems to be go time since the drop of the green flag. Some at a disadvantage, some at an advantage. Some just trying to stay on the lead lap. I think Josh Kennedy may be next in that bump. That question of uncertainty. 33 to go. Walker slicing, dicing, did not lead early on in this race. Trafari has mainly been a top three quick truck. 
continue to watch. He's now half a second back to the Aiden Walker machine. Thurston has dropped back to a second and maybe a more. Whoa, we almost just poked the sim by being on board there with the driver number nine after he nosed it into the ground. Thurston fading. Gavin Austin may be coming into distance. You see the battle for the first place position, and here's the battle for third. Josh Kenyon one down. Joseph Goff back in 16. Jafari into Walker. Slowed them both down. Thurston, momentum carried. Three trucks back nose to tail. This is just amazing. To the inside goes the nine. Tries to get the roll off. Walker on the outside. Toyota, Chevrolet to the start finish line. Trafari led that lap, the third different leader of this race. Wants to switch back to the inside. Walker's got the momentum. Daylight to turn two. They see the tailgate of the nine. But has to watch back on his own tailgate because Thurston is there on his six. You know, by the way, the lap speeds have it quickened. Big time, they've gained nearly a second a lot from what we're seeing, and now we've gotten that information down in the chat below. Two trucks outside wall. Half a second the difference between first and second. Jafari, the truck leader. 30 to go. Walker 7-5, Walker in eight. Now Walker down to half a second. Gavin Austin 2-6 back, the top 14 are still all on the lead lap. It's 15th on back, that's now at least one or many laps down. 29 to go. James Thurston. Oh, to the inside of the 75, to the outside of the 37. Looking, peeking, plotting. Gavin Austin. Contact, now maybe even more there. Whoa, one around, Moss Steller. Up and a contact with Josh Kenyon. This will be a track blocker and will bring the caution out for the first time. That was for fifth. Look to be a caution-free race. We'll have us restart him. Let's watch back. Him and Josh Kennedy. They've had a history in the past before. I don't think Josh was too happy here at the 87. He very much showed his displeasure. Now it's for a top five spot. Lock some oncomers. And after multiple incidents around the track, it seemed time to throw the L. This goes back. I mean, very much back, clearly. <laughs> it very much goes back to turn four. And Josh, not happy apparently, was muted by the admins and was showing his displeasure. And uh, if this was happening outside the top 20, this would not be a caution. But since it was happening up inside the top five, and we knew Demos had some type of strategy to go all the way, as well as Popsi Barbagallo, Gucci. And after all the incidents on track, the caution will come out. So 27 laps to go in this race. I have to ask you all, what do you think? Are you loving this race?
I mean, I enjoy it. I think it's really cool, honestly. It's different. It's fun. It's exciting. It's a new way to call races. But the big thing is it is very, very loud. So it's going to be tough to see maybe if we can interview some of these guys. 94% watching this are saying it. they are enjoying it. Let's go talk with the Josh and hear what exactly he has to say about that. Josh Kenny and John Ramos, you got a copy. Yeah. What happened there? See, uh, when I joined the session, I uh, I told them to EOL someone lagging, and uh, I didn't think anyone heard me, so I said it again, and I got uh, muted by uh, the admin for it. And uh, the entire race, I've been getting wrecked by other people, and I can't say anything. And uh, I gave him a little bump to show him I was not happy with it, and he hit me back, so, you know. Showing that displeasure, that's... It's very interesting, but, you know, you're going to have another opportunity to go at this again. We're, they're lining up like they're going to get the one to go this time by. Well, nah, we're going to go an extra lap to kind of hear what you all think. But at least from what you've seen as a driving standpoint, how is it? Because up here in the booth and watching back at home, it seems very, very interesting. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's uh, back and forth, uh, up and battling. You know, I... I didn't want to intentionally wreck him, but, you know, if you're going to hit me like that because I gave you a tiny bomb, I'm going to get back. Oh, that's Josh Kenyon's uh, two cents on it. A lot of races left to go. Good luck. Let's go ahead and dial up uh, Dominic Barbagallo before we go back. Green flag racing. Barb is actually having a great night. Finished well in uh, the elimination race and running up inside the top ten. Barb, it's a John. You got a copy. Yeah, I do, John. I, I think it just heard me. You have ran really, really well. Elimination, I think you did a lot better than some may have expected. You're running up yeah. inside the top ten. It, tonight, the first two races, and let's be saving the first three races, pretty much gimmicks, right? GT3 is on yeah. oval. That's not real. But there's a challenge to it. What makes a gimmick a gimmick, there's two versions of it. There's the gimmick as in where it could be just a lottery versus a gimmick showing you strategy. Tonight's been all about strategy, and you've been very resilient on that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm, sweat I'm sweating really bad. I, now, I knew it. I knew so it. So we were having an interview with Doug, and he was huffing and puffing qualifying. How tough is it right now? Explain to the viewers back I at home. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's tough. The toughest part is when there's a car next to you, because you don't know where the truck's going. <laughs> yeah. It darts in whatever direction it wants to dart in. <laughs> well, we're going to get ready for the restart here. You think I shot at winning? Got 25 laps to go. Well, if I can get past Mr. I Retired today, I mean, I, I could probably win. Who's I Retired today? Daniel Monstello. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, he's, he's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> his tweet, his April Fool's tweet, that's right. But well, hey, we're going to yeah. let you go, my man. Good luck. I gotcha. Dominic Barbagallo, ladies and gentlemen, locked, loaded once again. So 25 laps to go, coming down off turn number four. The crowd rises to its feet just one more time. Pat Green from Wild West Motorsports Park. Navigating turn one, and there goes the leaders. Jafari, Aiden Walker, and a track blocker towards the back end. The caution will wave again. Or should we say once more, as the top two that were up front all race long involved in an incident. Wow. That's a replay we very much need to go watch. James Thurston, Jason Beckman, your new race leaders. This was the run to turn one. Thurston gets into Aiden Walker, turns the nine around. Doug New Pigging involved. This is what happened towards the middle half of the field, heading to turn one. Uh, there was just nowhere to go, just a complete track blocker. Matthew Post, Dominic Barbagalli just spoke with him. Left sides up on the concrete barrier. 
And you'll see it again. This is really how it all started. It was a hit from the 91. That's Aaron Shu goal. Left side's up on the cushion. And some of these guys just barreled on in like they had real no sense of doing so. I mean, they're... Well, they definitely had a sense of doing so. There was really no reason to do so, should I say. Then Barbagallo just gets the left sides up, and the caution was forced to be thrown. So two cautions now in the books. The sun is setting from Wild West Motorsports Park, but at the same time, it is definitely still a race that continues to have different characteristics to it. Beckman, Austin, Mosteller, Vincent Gucci, Delgado, Trafari will now be starting in seventh. We'll get the one to go uh, maybe this time by. Yes, we will. We'll get it this time by, and we will have another restart. And the restarts can be quick. There's not going to be a lot of cleanup. But you just don't want to see that as a driver. You want to see this race going all the way green for Jason Beckman. He has life as he will be restarting on the front row. Two laps to go. Will be 21 this time by. Pace Shock will make the hard ride on the pit road. Beckman, Thurston, Mosteller and company back underway. Lap truck going around. Austin. Trafari, three, four, one for the lead. Trafari wide, Austin on the bottom. Pushing and shoving. James Thurston at new race leader. I believe they're going to L5 Keola Hankins here for jumping the start, even as, as a lap car trying to get his lap back. You cannot do that. Once you get one to go, you can't get any laps back at all. Thurston. Trafari Austin. Beckman back to fourth. Got up to the back end of that 72. That went around to get his lap back. Remember, that was not for position. Goes to the outside. Oh, second. Gavin Austin muscling his way in. Austin to second. Beckman to third. Mosteller to fourth. Trafari to fifth. Joseph Goff up to sixth. Thurston, no speed off turn four. That's just been a struggle for him nonstop. Back been around, holds on to it. Walker, back on the loud pedal. Gavin Austin is really giving it his all to go back up there and take that lead. 7-1 the difference was. It's now around a 7-6. Lap truck on the bottom, Matthew Post on the outside. Byram, Ridge, Barbagallo, Goff, Hornish, White, Walker, Rodriguez, Doug Newbigging. James Thurston, your race leader by a 1-4. Mosteller into the fourth position. Shoe goal, Byram, fifth and six. Thurston. It's the corners where I feel like he loses so much time. And just look at Kavanaugh, he's back to a one-two. 
I mean, that four machine has the opportunity to throttle off. But the big thing is, second, third, and fourth are just so much better for the corners where Thurston is just so much better on the straights. Maybe, objectively, the difference could be turn three. But there's definitely a weakness and a strength to every driver inside this fast four. 18 to go. Trafari just nails Kevin Austin in the door to take the second position. That's one way to get around a guy. Was a buck ten now down to a ninety-eight. Eight three the difference. Trafari the man on a mission. Seventeen to go. One truck to the inside. Gets off the racing surface and all the momentum by the nine has just been lost. Oh, Chad Hornish up to ten. On his way around Barbagallo. Aiden Walker back in the 14th position after a bad, bad restart. There was the incident on the first restart when he was turned around, and the second one that did not result in a yellow. His opportunity of winning, well, it looks very slim, glim altogether. 16 laps to go. I think Trafari's going to have a shot of catching up. You just see James Thurston can't navigate the bumps like he wants to. I mean, the Ford has been so upset through the corners, but so so amazing on the straights. On the straights, you look at Trafari there at that Toyota. He's so much better in the corners, but lacks speed on the straights. I think this race is just going to come down to who can navigate and I guess you could say suppress the weaknesses a little bit better. There's did a great job from turn three to turn four to open up that gap. But Jafari still had a better drive down off four. 16, 15 laps to go from Wild West Motorsports Park. Christian Delgado. He's off, he's down into the dirt. Thurston, oh, Trafari around. Off the nose of Delgado. Kevin Austin will take the second place position. Chad Hornish around. Jason Beckman around. And turn two just became a problem spot. Still incidents, Horn is still around, too many incidents in one corner and the caution's gonna wave. And just got so slick over there. And we will have another restart. Well, well, well. Have a restart. So check out and see what happened. This was heading down into turn two. Or should we say this heading down into turn four? Before that turn two move, Gavin yeah, Austin got all over the humps. Gonna hold on. There's Delgado, going wide, heading back on the racetrack after going wide into the dirt pit. Safari went over, trying to find his way through. Delgado didn't make contact at all. He just looped it around and then we just were not done. Turning trucks around in turn two to bring out the caution. Matthew Post. 
Another lap truck. Chad Hornish. And then they just did not stop there. So a restart is upon us. As we get ready to go back green. Oh, James Thurston. James Thurston just got stuck into the catch fence. I cannot believe it. James Thurston, your race leader, came off turn four and got it stuck in the catch fence under caution. And his race could very much be over right there. That's it. A strong performance is out for the driver of the four. It's now Kevin Austin and Daniel Mosteller, your race leaders. Oh my, oh my. You cannot tell me that's how you throw a race win away. We talked about him struggling in the tight corners. I didn't think it would be under caution. Can we get a replay quickly before we go back green? Watch here. Truck's just turning, turning, goes for a slide. I cannot believe it. Time to go back green from Wild West Motorsports Park. The name living up to the race sticks on the board. 11 laps to go. Gavin Austin leads in the push, the shove. Jason Beckman trying to make up time, but it's the Tucson, Arizona driver that gets ahead. Safari, Mosteller, Aaron Shugol. Austin to the lead. Mosteller on the bottom. Ten to go in the battle for the lead. Toyota, Ford, both manufacturers have been going at it all race long. Hard on the suspension. Trafari to the inside, no deuce. The turn two, and that nine has been so good at lunging in to a corner, but the drive off still carries for most. Barbacolo around. Gets out of the way. Moss Seller in third. Trafari P2. And some of these trucks have got to get off the track. The second leaders are coming. Half a second the difference. Toyota versus Ford. Place your bets because it's nine to go. Trafari to the inside, Austin rolls center. Mosteller back and forth. Hard fought battle there with Matthew White. Austin goes wide, Trafari downstairs. No runoff exit. He's gonna start using the bumper soon. And that nine has seen the tailgate more than once. And next time he gets that nose to it, you can bet he's gonna use it. Oh, he gets in the side of him. Austin gets away. Jafari loses speed. Kevin Austin, biggest advantage all night. Eight laps to go. And we knew he was gonna do something. Jafari has never won a race in our night in America. Tonight. Could be his first.
second and a half. He's got to make it up. He just was not patient enough. There was enough time to just use the bumper at some point to turn four. One spinning, 87. Most into the inside wall. Aaron Schuchel to third. Trafari holding on to second. One five, one eight. Eight to go, we'll bring seven laps to go from Wild West. Gavin Austin an advantage of a one seven. Now a two. I think he threw all of his chips in the middle on that lap alone. Really hurt him. Connor Trafari now three seconds back. Gavin Austin. It's his race if nothing goes wrong. Ford held point early on. Chevy and Toyota led at some point. But with seven coming to six laps to go, it's the Gavin Austin Ford. Now we'll see the start finish line. Look what else is going on in the middle of the pack. Here's third. Mostella trying to close back in at least for a podium position. Shunting, shuffling, swing. Trafari closes the gap. Closes the gap even more to a 2-2. Two -two. Austin just did not have the best run down off that second turn, but into turn three. Shows just a little bit more promise. All he must do is maintain pace. Back to turn four, lap traffic ahead. Five to go from Wild West. Trafari still 2-5, 2-4. He's really good on entry. His exit, so he can throw that one away. Not the best on entry to the center of turn one. Hornish to 12th, Goff to 11th, Kenyon back to 10th, Barbagala to 9th, Ridge to 8th, Jason Beckman to 7th. Aiden Walker, after being back in 14th at one point, climbs back to the third place position. What a comeback story after leading earlier in this race. Got caught up in a couple messes. Four to go for the driver of the 12. Beckman P3, Shugol P4, Matthew White P6. Jason Beckman P7. Two, three, two, four, still the difference. As there's just not enough consistency out of Trafari. Oh, maybe there is, because Kevin Austin goes around in two. Here comes Trafari to take the lead. I cannot believe it. Oh, this is going to be a race to the checkered flag. Gavin Austin into the lap truck. Displeased with what happened. That might have been Miles Davis. No, it was not. Austin P2, now a second back. They should not have let the frustration out on that truck. Should have just left, left to keep going. We're left to continue going. Because now he has three laps to go in a makeup on a driver that's been consistently quick. Connor Trafari has never won a race in NR Night in America. And on this April Fool's night, he will have two and a half laps to get it done. Now you see the frustrations building up. And at 12, he's not focusing. He's got to let the pass be the pass and just focus on now. 
He's able to get a little bit more. One for the difference. Two laps to go. Trafari left signs off. Next lap truck, that's going to be Hornish. Second and a half, the difference. Hornish sideways. Shafari forced to get out of the gas. Austin trying to close on in. He's doing it now. I mean, Gavin has speed. I just worry if he's still thinking about what happened now a couple laps ago because that Jafari machine is pulling away. Sabaka, one to go from Wild West Motorsports Park. Doug Newbigging. We'll go a lap down. An amazing run in the elimination race for Connor Trafari. A car track combo that very few tested before tonight. Into turn three. And down the back stretch for the final time. The twists and turns of a dirt road course brought the uncertainty, the unpredictability. But tonight, you allow the headlines to read Connor Trafari, first career win in NR Night in America. Barbagallo coming in, Gavin Austin second. Aiden Walker, Jason Beckman. A wild race at a wild track. TRD comes home with the win. Now what track do we go to for race number three? I think Connor Trafari is becoming a fan favorite here in the chat. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? E-ticket event worthy? I mean, that is just amazing. What he was able to do tonight, I didn't think he was going to be a threat at all in the first race. He was. And he backs up with the win here. The lap truck made that big difference. That's why Aiden Walker did not find, or not Aiden Walker, that's why Gavin Austin did not find victory lane. Well, things got wild. They got wild quickly. And for Connor Trafari, it'll be his first visit to victory lane. And we gotta see what all went down with Gavin Austin. I mean, you saw it. Lap truck to the inside. Jeremy Gottlieb was most likely in the way he was. And he may be L5 for the night on that one. Unreal stuff. An unreal race. And that was the payback right there. Pushing and shoving resulted in some of the wildest things to go down. Let's go talk to Gavin Austin and finish B2. Gavin, it's a John. You got a copy? Yeah, I'm pissed, dude. I can tell. Is that lively, by the way, the driver number nine? Uh, no. So who is the mystery man of 
Uh, Connor Trafarian, why is he so fast? Uh, he's a buddy from a league I do. And, um, yeah, kind of came out like what we were doing tonight, and uh, I told I taught him how to get into the races and snipes. He's good. I'm sorry. I just. Well, we we need him to join the chat. We gotta also yeah. talk to him. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, walk me through your positioning on what happened. Um, the beginning of the race, the first half, um, I was there and I was just kind of playing it safe. And then last half, I just decided to go all out. Um, I don't know. I had it. I had a lead by over two and a half seconds, three seconds, and um, lap car just has to remove. Uh, by the way, this isn't. Oh, uh, it's. Very unfortunate, but hey, top two on a wild track. How about it? That's Gavin Austin and the newcomer, Connor Trafari. This is your first night of racing in NR Night in America. You did great in the elimination for April Fools. You back it up with your first win. How about it? And a nice hello to the viewers back at home. Oh, yeah. That was a, that was a race for sure. That was uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I love that combination. I actually did a combination with the exact same cars and stuff uh, last week in a league I raced in the, called NASCAR. Are uh, you oh going to race Center Night in America more often? Because, I mean, these these uh, guys are loving it. Hell yeah. Uh, I, I might. Like, some nights whenever I don't the league or I'm not working, I'll definitely show up, yeah. Well, how about it? Newcomer doing great things. We do stream tomorrow night. Hopefully, we stream tomorrow night. The plan still is very much. We have an e-ticket coming up. And... I'm loving this chat, oh, what they're saying. Well, Trafari, here's the big news. We don't have a track yet for race three because we're doing a bunch of changes with April Fools, and I'm getting ready to call races this weekend, preparing for some severe weather coming in tomorrow. I didn't get to pick a third track. It will be a GT3 race on an oval. So where do you think we should go? <laughs> Man, don't put all that pressure on me. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I feel like a, a plate race would be pretty nah, fun. Nah, I don't like know about that. players. We got an e-ticket coming up. We have an e-ticket yeah. event. That's a Talladega. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I don't know. I feel like, like a Charlotte or a Kansas could be fun. Maybe a Las Vegas or an auto club. I feel like a white track could be a lot of fun with those grippy cars. What about a grassroots track? Grassroots track. Uh, like, what do you mean? Like a short track? Yeah. What about? Do you think a short track would work? Uh, like a Richmond or an Iowa. Some are saying Iowa. Some are saying Texas. Some are saying Legacy Texas. And the, for the hardcore viewers that have been around for a long, long time, I'm talking about when I was in high school uh, doing this YouTube channel, some are saying Indianapolis because that's a combo we used to do way, way, way back when. No Talladega or Daytona tonight. We're holding off on that. We're, you guys are going to have the probably the best e-ticket event coming April 19th at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on this YouTube channel. Have to lock in drivers for that. Jafar, you will be considered for that event as well. I want to keep that in mind due to you winning. Wait, when is it? April 19th, if you can make it. I probably should. <laughs> I'll work that night. Yeah, it's okay. But anyways, where do you think we should go with the GT3? Some are saying, no, uh, not Eldora. We're done with dirt. <laughs> that would be funny. Slinger um, would be pretty cool. Oh, Kern County would be really cool. I like the current county idea. I feel like a, like an Iowa could be cool for sure. Richmond could definitely be interesting. What about like a like a Bristol perchance? A Bristol? I mean, would they stick? We, some are saying Auto Club because we've tested Auto, Auto Club before. Club? I mean, that could be good because it's a wire track and stuff. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead. I've seen South Boston. I'm going to put four votes out there. By the way, if we want race number four tonight, we're gonna need a hit. 300 likes. We're less than two, or we're less than 100 away on that one. Iowa, Kentucky, South Boston, an SRX track. Okay, you know I like the idea of what Joe said. Joe, Joe's a really intelligent driver. If he's saying Auto Club, I guess I can go ahead and back that one. So we're gonna have a vote for it on what track we'll go. With. This is GT3. So let's go Auto Club. Which one were you thinking, Trafari? Uh, shoot. I think I was I was said Bristol was one. I said Vegas. Chat's definitely saying Vegas, so we'll throw Vegas in there. Martinsville's headlining tomorrow for the ones that are wondering. It'll be race number one, so we're gonna keep Martinsville off. Darlington will be something. I'm not sure how, if that would be a good race, but Darlington and what about Phoenix? Phoenix, no, let's scratch check Darlington out. And, uh, or scratch Darlington out, check in Phoenix. I like that one. 
Phoenix, good job. How about that? See, look, you know exactly what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Phoenix, and then we're going to throw Homestead in there. We'll see how that rolls out. I think that is really... Ooh, Gateway. But we just did Gateway. That's the big thing. And I'm trying to build up the viewership or the demand for Gateway. I would l love to try New Hampshire. I think that's a big four. GT3s, tonight's a weird night, but have you ever tried them on an oval? Because apparently uh, you've tried this I've, before. I, I think I've done like a play race once with them, honestly. From what you've seen, how does it drive? Uh, it had to have been like a year or two ago, honestly, but I would assume they probably drive all right. Some are saying vote Phoenix. Phoenix would be the better option because of uh, the horsepower management. But Auto Club is winning by a country mob. We just have so much love for Auto Club. Ever since that e-ticket event we did, it was really, really exciting. A lot of fanfare right now for the Auto Club side. But that was an amazing Wild West race. You did it such a great job. How did you manage the bumps? Uh, Honestly, it, it kind of just depended on like when you shift in and stuff and like let off. Like a lot of them, I timed the shifts perfectly to where I would be like on the throttle, full throttle, and I would shift into third, so I wouldn't get much wheel spin. Right. And then I, I honestly kind of just full sent the, the jumps and kind of prayed that I just kind of. So there was really no, let's say, strategy to the jumps. It was kind of just I hope it doesn't land the wrong way. Yeah, most of the time, like. The only jump I was really just, I had a plan for was the backstretch one where I would take it a little bit easier because if I took it a little bit easier, the next two after that, I could I like manage a little bit better than if I full sent it. Well, hey, that's I mean, that's something interesting. I'm guessing we have to do the low down for setup for sure uh, on this one. It's not gonna be sprint or should we just do baseline? I'm gonna have to get Joseph Armstrong in here for that one to hear what he's got to say. But hey, first time winner. You want to say anything to anyone back at home? Oh uh, yeah, I want to give a shout to uh, Chase Gibbons, Ethan Harrison, and Brad Sawinski. They honest, I, I think they actually contributed a little bit with this setup, because I think it's the same setup I've ran before. And honestly, it makes this car drive so amazing on rally tracks, it's actually like a lot of fun. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Chris Lay Designs. Uh, makes amazing paint schemes. Uh, I guess you for putting on this broadcast in this, in this race. This race was honestly a lot of fun. Well, heck, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. That was Trafari, new driver, new winner in NR Night in America, the next generation of high-tech racers. How about it? Uh, Frank DeAngelis is here with us. Frank, you got a copy. And there is no copy just yet out of Frank D'Angelo. So it looks like we're going to be doing the low down for setup. I thought I'd, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be baseline or what, but clearly Auto Club is winning, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Love to hear from Frank to hear what he's got to say. I believe that will not be uh, the case. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's do it. We're going to put an open setup. So you guys can tinker with the car quickly. Very, very quickly. They'll have like no time to really make any adjustments. But we'll head to Auto Club and we will have it rolling out. Enter Night in America, feeling victories all year long. 30 laps from the Auto Club Speedway. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR, and you've been watching one wacky and weird night here on this April Fool's Night in America. We look to have, once again, racing tomorrow. For the ones that are still wondering why I say looking instead of confirmed, let's walk through it. Uh, enhanced risk of tornadoes for all of Middle Tennessee, including Nashville. You then look at the fact that when it's coming in, it looks to be coming in around a time that I would have to make or do a make or break for the stream. So there's three ideas of what's looming right now for the stream. It's either number one, the stream gets canceled, which I do not want to do, and I'm going to explain why. There is no stream this Friday, so a stream cancellation gets nothing done. Number two, a delayed stream, which I'd be okay with. A true NR night in America. Who watched back in 2021? There's been a couple times we would stream on a Friday. I would get off work really late at like 10. We would drop the hammer at 11 Eastern. If we have to do an 11 o'clock start time for one or two races... Let it be. 
just, I guess that's how it's gonna have to be, is I really wanna get tomorrow's stream in. Or number three, we have no tornadoes in my area. None of the power goes out. We race. And the reason why I'm saying even if a tornado comes somewhat near me, the power could go out. There's no guarantee when the power will come back on. For sometimes it could be a couple hours. Sometimes it could be a couple days. My last tornado that I had was right before an e-ticket event. It took four days for the power to get back on. It was just a mass uh, trying to get everything ready for the event. So love to stream tomorrow. Planning on streaming tomorrow. Why are we not streaming Friday? If you haven't already heard, I'll be with the CRA series, the Jack Siri All-Stars Tour. No, it will not be the Jack Siri All-Stars Tour. It will be at the CRA Street Stocks that will be at Bristol Motor Speedway. I'll be calling the race with Zach Heiser. And then right at the end of that race, not joking, I have to go all the way from the top of East Tennessee near Virginia and drive all the way back to Middle Tennessee to call all of the races at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway for opening day. Opening day's Pro Late Model Race will be live on this YouTube channel. I just recently did a test at the track. It's going to work. It is very much going to work. The camera will be in the booth. John Nix and I will be up in the tower. It will be live for the Pro Late Model Race. I'm not sure about the Limited Late Model Race. The Limited Late Model Race will be really cool. It could be live for Limiteds as well, but only time will tell on that. The idea is to get at least one late model race in. The limited late models will be on the quarter mile. The pros will be on the big track, the 5.8s. And it's going to be a great, great year. I really want to broadcast on YouTube all the 10 races. Or should we say all the 9 races. Sessions up, passwords IDK. And the big reason for that is because a couple of new drivers that have come in have shown a lot of speed. And it's going to be an exciting year. Uh, Dylan Fetcher will not be running full-time at Nashville this year. Originally, I said he has the opportunity to tie Cuckoo Marlin, which is Sterling Marlin's father. Guess what? He will not be doing it this year because he's going to be running part-time doing trophy hunting and uh, trying different things out, mostly on the super late model side. So Dylan Fetcho will not be running for the track championship. There's a couple guys that are looking for their first win in NR night in America, as well as Nashville. Not joking, because a couple of those guys have raced center night in America. So that's why I went ahead and mentioned that. If you want to keep up to date on everything, you can go to the race fairgrounds or the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway.com. Be continuing to give you guys updates throughout the year, and you get to follow along. And if you want to watch all the broadcasts live on this uh, streaming service, shall we say it is Racing America. TV. Racing America will be the home for all Nashville broadcasts this season. They'll also be home for a lot of Jeg Serie All-Star Store races I'll be calling. So, session is up. Password is IDK. We're loaded on in. Good amount of drivers in this session. I'm excited to see what they've got, what they're going to try. I'm curious. I'm very curious. I think most of you are curious as well because there's no guarantee this is going to be uh, a slam dunk race, right? There's no guarantee it's going to be the best show ever. We don't know what we're going to see. We could see amazing racing. We could see not so amazing racing. Can we see race four? Who knows? Would you want me to race in race four? Who knows? If I race in race four, I already know the combo. It would be. It would be a truck race at an intermediate at Chicagoland because I've been doing that recently and it is actually a lot of fun. And I fixed the steering ratio area in a way that it could be a whole lot of fun. So keep an eye out for it. Andrew Cootie, Ash Ridge, Aiden Walker, Kerry Rogers. I need to back out. Back out of this session, ladies and gentlemen. Back out of this session. I left uh, healing on. I left healing on. Back out of the session. We're going to give some people time to do that. I did make that mistake. want to say thank you to everyone that's updated me on that. We will not be racing in that session. You're going to be racing in a session that says, join this. So we'll give it some time. We'll start interviewing drivers to have the opportunity. Joe, it's the John. You got a copy. <clears throat> yeah, I got you. What's you went up? to Richmond. How was it watching racing in the rain and also racing in the rain on iRacing? Um, well, I didn't get to do a lot of racing in the rain and iRacing, um, at Richmond at least. Um, but it was a fun race to watch. You know, my favorite driver, or one of my favorite drivers won with Denny. And uh, my other favorite driver got screwed by his pit crew again. So, like, you know, uh, you can't have two. Oh, what, 
Leave the race. What? We are leaving the race. I accidentally had damage healing still on. I'm not doing that this time. We, we you uh, guys can thanks. race to that damage. Right, I gotta ask you this. Yeah. We're closing to race number four. What would you like to see if we did it? This is April Fool's night. Remember that. That's a uh, figure eight race. Uh, he forgot to turn damage on. So we're leaving. I want to see a figure eight race. I don't know about that one. I don't know. That yeah, would be tough. To see it. Only way see it. we do it is if I race it. Streets want to see it. Or, or, hear me out. Hear me out. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. Yeah, no, <laughs> I got okay. nothing on that one. So Everybody why would you want to figure eight? I'd do it if I race it. Well, Only if I race it. Because a figure eight race would go down as a real NR9 America race. We've done one. You you did it, if I'm not mistaken. How would you feel about it? It was funny. It was um I mean, that was pretty much it. I'd only do funny. a figure eight if I am racing it. That we is... need to jump up and do it. Make the race fixed, please. Oh, I already bought the session. But we don't know what setup to use. Bro, just pick one. We're all on the same one anyways. Well, I mean, oh, no. it is it is open no matter what. Uh, Got to ask you, how was it being there? Uh, I thought the rain racing, at least at Richmond, was really cool. The rain was cool. Um, uh, you hung out yeah. with Bob Hawkers. Well, I, yeah, I went to the meetup or the tweet up, I should say, whatever it's called. Um, met some cool people, met the people at Victory Lane Vibe, shout out to them. Um, met a few other Twitter personalities in the NASCAR, NASCAR world. Um, right into Steve Phelps before the race, so that was pretty cool. What'd you uh, say what to else? Uh, I just kind of said good luck. I wasn't really going to... Good, good luck, I didn't have Steve. Any, I, didn't, I didn't have anything bad to really say in the moment, you know. No, I wasn't talking about anything bad. I thought you were going to say something oh. like, you know, hey, you guys should give, like, Richmond the finale or something. Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, Richmond couldn't do that. I don't think, especially after la yesterday, I don't think. Uh, I don't think yesterday was a bad race, though. I, I understand. I'm going to, okay. No, you can, we can agree or disagree on this one. NASCAR had an amazing Daytona 500. The finish was not what people were expecting, but still an amazing race. They back it up with a three-wide finish at Atlanta that everyone expected for a Daytona, right? And then all of a sudden, great race after great race after wild incidents after amazing things. It's okay to have a Coda race that is more about fundamentals and a Richmond race that's more about fundamentals. Obviously, that caution destroyed the strategy of it, but yeah. I still think it was at least a fairly good race. Yeah, I mean, Richmond races have been... You know, over the past few years, it's been kind of like just middle of the road. You know, if you if you're a fan of like, I guess I want to say pure racing, because like it's not really like, <laughs> I don't know. There's not like a lot of racing. Like they're just driving around the track really until the strategy comes into play. And with these cars, man, oh my goodness, we gotta figure something. Well, out. I gotta ask that. So let's debate that. Richmond has been having that is or issue for a little while now, where they're all on the same speed. At least that's what I heard from some personnel at the Richmond Raceway that have made comments online. So, who were they? I'm not saying names. I just saw okay. it online. I was scrolling. And yeah. some people were saying that, including from people that were at the Richmond personnel. So, I got to ask you, you've been to Gen 6 races there. Is it the same problem? Uh, well, the Gen 6 race that I went to, the, the well, the first one I went to was the 2019 race. So, it wasn't really like... Much yeah, better, so that was like, well, it was 750, but it was just no. You know. 19, if it was 2019, they still had 550. No, 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 no. they had 750. No, it was 750. Are you sure for 2019? I will make that bet right now. You want? You put, let's put five. In 2019, on it. every race was 550, minus yeah, the super put speed ways. Put five on it. What? <laughs> the short track and road courses were 750. No, they were not. There's no way. Put five on There's it. There's no way. I'm telling you, put 2019. Every race was 550. Okay. All right. You want to you want to look it up? I'll look it up. Go ahead. Someone's gonna look it up for me. I know every race in 2019 was 550. That we completely missed everything you said. I'm still reconnecting, oh. by the way. I'm, my eye racing just kapoofed on me. So you gotta give it a moment. We're still reconnecting. There you go. We're back. So back to what we're saying. 2019. Yeah. 750. I'm, it, did you look it up? I don't need to look it up. I was you in the race. To, I know. I know wheel. I know, I know you're wheel. wrong. There's no way 2019 had a 750 race.
They had 750. They had multiple 750 races. No, they did not. I will get Jared in here right now. You can't get him in here. He doesn't know Will as much as I do either. 2019. I know Will. NASCAR. If you Aero look it up on Google, it's going to say 550 on because that's like the first year of it. The Aero Package that will be run in every cup race consists of the okay. following. Spoiler Aero Package, inches, not Motor Package. Spoiler not 8 inches. Package. Splitter 2, Overhang, 10.5 wings. Okay, let's see horsepower. Let's see horsepower. I hear a silence. All right, ready? Beyond the baseline components are the smaller... I'm reading... I'm reading off NASCAR's reading page, by the way. That's I'm reading fine. on NASCAR's page. That's fine. It will be around 550, down from the current 750 of 2018. Yeah. yeah. They ran 750 on the short tracks, bud. No, <laughs> did not. Yes, they did. That's why there's like a bunch of track records for like the short tracks. 2019 NASCAR 2019. Cup Series rule package. Let's see it. Okay. That's 2019. Okay, no, hold on. Track. Track. That's not right. There's no way. The, the Martinsville had a giant spoiler. Yes, I know that. I said they were in the 750 with the big spoiler. <laughs> There's no way. Are you kidding me? I'd like my five. I didn't. We didn't bet on it. Okay. There's no way. I. There's no way. I, you didn't I know. It's okay. I it's okay. could have sworn it was 550 the entire time with the big motor. Or the big spoiler. So no, hold on. I have to reread it. You don't need to reread it. You read it right the first time. I told you already. It was the 750 of the short track. Huh. I have to see this once again. Uh, hold on. 2019 Aero Package. Horsepower. Richmond. You said Richmond? Short tracks in general. I mean. That's just Richmond for no, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was the Aero Ducks. Never mind. It was the Aero Ducks. They had them off for Richmond. They had them off for Yeah, tracks. they had brake decks for, the, for those tracks. Huh. Anyways, he went to a Richmond race that was with the G6. I did. Was it oh, different? Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was different. Like I said, like the last race there um, was the September race. It was still in the fall at the time, playoffs or whatever. And like Denny and Chase, they had a really good battle that that race. Truex won. Obviously, like the Gibbs cars were dominant, but like it was a good race, I'd say. You know, for Richmond standards, right? Um, and like even the next gen races have been really good. I rather than racing the, oh, <laughs> I rather than racing the day to be honest. Really? Next gen. Um, I just think it kind of caters more to the tire wear and stuff. Um, but you, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I think yesterday was fun to watch if you were a fan of Hendrick or Gibbs or Toyota. If you're a Ford fan, well. Need to jump off that bandwagon. No, 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 no. Because Ford is down in the dumps. I mean, they're awful. You know, I could talk all day about it. I'm not going to. I'm gonna make some fans upset. You know. Well, you're racing this but race. Is, I'm guessing, it. right? Yeah, I'm in here. Yeah. Okay, so here's your run. opportunity. Walk us through a lap with this car. What car are you using? The Porsche. The Porsche. I feel like I made a mistake. I know I had the well, fastest I mean, that lap was time like the overall. best car anyways on the road courses. But I mean, you really yeah, don't but, have any yeah. information on the oval. This isn't. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think anything but a Porsche has won in the GT3 class for us. And we advanced right to the race. I did not see that one coming. Okay. We are not in the race. We are still in practice. Are you sure? I am positive. Oh, this is the wrong set. This is the entirely wrong session. Oh, All these goodness. drivers are in the wrong session. They thought we were still racing. Back on out. I cannot believe I made that mistake again. What's going on? I gotta wake up. Back out. I gotta wake up. They're gonna back out of this one. There's 40 something. Yeah, don't back out of that one. I was just in the wrong session. There's like 40 something people <laughs> hanging out over there. Okay, so check that again. You guys are still in there. Uh, walk me through the car and why you think that's possibly not the right mode of transportation tonight well 
I don't know. I have a tenth on the field right now. I was in a draft lap, right? Um, some guy said that I, it's it's pretty sketchy and clean air. I mean, to be honest, it's just a lot of a lot of downforce. These cars suck very well, and um, I don't know the clean air. I got in clean air, and it just. I mean, even in dirty air, it was a little sideways. Maybe it's just the setup that I'm running. I don't really know what I'm doing with the rear wing and all that stuff to make it a little less loose. But uh, it'll be fun, I think. You know, we're going to be drafting, big time draft. And I think it'll be similar to the IndyCar race. Um, hopefully the finish is a little bit cleaner, though. Right. For me. Uh, let's go ahead and point this out. This has been a hot topic on the NASCAR side. You saw what happened at Richmond. Is it a horsepower issue or is it a gearing issue? Is it a suspension issue? Is it a tire issue? What is it from what you saw? Well, I'm a firm believer in it is not the horsepower that is the issue. I think we proved that at Bristol, that it wasn't the horsepower that was the issue. Um, yeah, I'm Bristol, no arrow. Bristol was a, just a wacky race. Yeah, Good. Bristol was. It was like was. a happy mistake, you know? But like that, that's kind of what I'm getting like that package like Bristol the past couple years They don't use the short track package at Bristol, but like um, The past couple years Bristol's kind of been like eh compared to what it had been in the Gen 6 um, And like in Xfinity and, and, and trucks are pretty bad But even this year trucks were really good like this is the best year for trucks in a while at Bristol and And cup was good because the tires fell off I don't know if there's really anything you can do. Well, there obviously is, but I don't know the fix. I think it's the tire. The car is, um, I mean, it's just a lot of aero stuff that goes on with the car in general. They've obviously like pushed and stuff, and I, I don't think that the aero is really going to fix. I think, oh, you advanced, okay. Yeah, we're cool. advanced and we're ready to go at it. So we are in here. Yeah. It, took a, it took a lot longer to set this race up than it should have, <laughs> so apologies. Uh, for that so qualifying. No, we're not qualifying. We're going right into the race again. Yeah, you just advanced to the race the oh, So you guys already had happy. qualifying No, we were in the middle of qualifying this group qualifying. No, it was single car qualifying oh, Oops, yeah. I did not know that well I could have sworn it was uh group so it's still gonna be 43 drivers going at it, it seems from the ways of everything but BMW up front, you got James Thurston. How you feeling about it? He is. He is. Is he in a BMW? I can't tell. Someone's in a BMW. There's a car on that. That might be Demos. He's I'm not on. I'm gonna have to learn all these yet. new paint schemes. Demos is in a Mercedes. Yeah. There's like Brad Picari is in the. Hey, Brad Picari is back. How about that? He's still running the Princess Beach car. Do you know why he runs the Princess Beach car? Do you say why? Um. I don't, I don't remember. I know he said it before, but I, I don't recall why. All right, well, 8, 30 laps. This could be the final race of the night. We'll be back Tuesday night, most likely, as long as the power stays on after uh, the tornado cells start falling, uh, falling their way through. But, hey, Joe, opportunity to go ahead and win. Good luck. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is round number three of April Fool's Night in America as we get ready to ride off just once more. Sorry about the stream crashing on us. It's okay, because we're getting ready to go back under the green flag. Here shortly with race number three. Let's get ready to go, Green. Let's say those magical words. God, speed. Drivers, you are go for throttle up. Let's go green. Sorry, new bigging Walker. First race on oval that's somewhat consistent to what we've done in the past, but it is another new car track combo. 
Out of the days of Ford, Chevy, and Toyota in our Mercedes Cadillac, Porsche, BMW, Audi, and so many others as we go racing with the GT3s on an oval. Two by two. Pace car makes a hard left on the pit road this time by. From coast to coast goes NR. From the asphalt to the dirt. From the sunshine and the rain, you've seen it all here. So let's go ahead and light the fuse in race number three. Mercedes, one, two, three on the bottom. It's gonna be a pack race, almost like how the trucks were every time we go here. Bukhari fifth, Mosteller in second, just all over the back end of James Thurston. Thurston, Mosteller, one spinning, Trevor Huff, Joseph Armstrong. Aaron Schuchel and others, caution's gonna wave. And the system is now having a big issue. As things have just gone absolutely out of black. I have no idea what's going on, but Oh, it's actually fixed. It was an overlay issue. That's been fixed, and we'll go ahead and watch back on that restart. Uh, the overlay's been having issues a little bit today. Nothing too crazy. Man, that's half the field on one side. Yes, it very much is um, one on the overlays. So let's go ahead and take a peek to see what exactly happened in the start of this race. Armstrong in the middle. Saw the 22, he just got loose right in front of him. Wow. Oh my. And there was just nowhere to go. And then all of a sudden the huge blinking issue happened and there's really nothing that these guys could have dealt with in that position. Uh, you knew it was going to be worrisome if the pack just exploded, but it completely just came apart, and that was easily a 20 car pileup. Wildness has taken center stage. And we will be ready to go back green flag racing. Oh, now we know what the issue was. There was about 50 drivers taking the green flag. It's the second time now the admins did not kick 44th on back. So caution is out and we'll get ready to try it all again. Bukhari, Thurston, Gucci. Lined up, nose to tail, wheel to wheel. And 
and will get ready to try once more. So it looks like Marty Shamela, Michael Davis, Noah Larson, James Coleman, Harper, Cootie, DeWeld, Welsh, Curtis are all out of the race after that huge, huge rack coming down off exit. So we'll be ready to try it again. We'll get the one to go here and we'll have 25 laps to go in this race. The second half of this stream got a little choppy, but as you all know, tomorrow night we'll be back on your regular scheduled NR Night in America racing. Let's go green. Kari, New Viking. Let's go green. So over the half the field has been taken out. After an incident on turn four, we'll be ready to go at it again. And here's an update for the Miami Marlins fans. They are now 0-5. They just lost all five of their first games this season and they lost to the los angeles angels that'll be seven and four marlins had nine hits the angels had seven so looking for that first win on the season so moss Steller lined up with new bigging Pukari lined up with james thurston let's get ready to roll the dice once more Twenty-five laps to go from Auto Club. Mosteller pulling away, Douglas New Bigging. Down in the second position, Brett Bukhari. Gavin Austin and company. Two by two, and the big worry is the slip of the rear end. You can see Thurston trying to fight that car. There is less downforce. There's also less horsepower compared to the cup car, but you're forced to drive it in a lot harder in three and four here at Auto Club. You'd expect to see that huge spoiler say, oh, should there be more downforce? Yes, technically, but most of these drivers have the opportunity to take downforce out of their cars to make the cars go just a little bit quicker. Well, take more downforce out, handling becomes a big issue. Chad Hornish working his way up. Oh, stack up in the middle, Schmidt Brower. Twenty-three laps to go from Auto Club. Thurston in six, Schmidt in seven, Walker back to eighth. You hear them breathing out of the gas. The inputs, what do they look like? How about really the same as a truck? Maybe just a little bit slower than a truck. That's the GTE, on an oval. That's actually the leader of Pumkari's speed of 180. And Walker having to flip out on the throttle. That's back in eight. Oh, he's going around. Walker slides down off turn number two. We stay green. We talked about it, just loses that rear end. It's very easy to do. Car on the outside. New bigging. Lined up, notes the tail. Moss Stellar on the bottom. 
21 laps to go from the Auto Club Speedway. Looking, shuffling. Bunkari the leader. He's trying to just get back down that inside. Holds a strong wheel back through three and four. Matthew Brower back in eighth. William Schmidt back in seventh. One spinning to the bottom. Chad Hornish goes down on pit road. Just caught the inside wall. And we'll keep it off. Everything else clips through a couple machines. 20 to go. One outside wall and a huge hit. That's for Connor Tafari. Another one car spin. More spinning towards the back half of the field and the caution's gonna wave. Looking on, Jason Beckman. The machine is all junked up. Waylon Vinning. Tyler Mertzger. A couple others that may have gotten a piece of it, at least earlier, that would be uh, Jaden Welsh. Caution out once again here from Auto Club. Let's see what happened. Ah, oh, he may have gotten turned. going to avoid it, Cooper Nash. And the real question is how Jason Beckman get down there. I, I think Jason Beckman may have gone in. Trafari. Trafari has a little lot. No, he just came down the track and he was very loose to begin with. And a big hit to the inside for the Beckman machine. So 19 laps to go. Uh, Bukhari, New Bigging, Mostar, Vincent Gucci, Gavin Austin, James Thurston, and William Schmidt. They line up one, two, three, four. Schmidt is actually going to line up now in that seventh position. Josh Kenyon, River Page, Ash Ridge, Carson Freeman, Ethan Eckert, Waylon Vinning, Benjamin A. Walker, Chad Hornish, Dustin McCrane, Connor Trafari is now back in that 19th spot. Remember that hit to the outside wall. I don't believe he'll be restarting there. He may be dropping back even more. So not a lot of cars really left standing after the two big wrecks we've had. No, this is not an elimination race. This is just a race to begin with. And from what we've seen, it's very much gone in the hands of the drivers that have been able to avoid any controversy or any incidents. How badly do you want to race for? Once again, we are streaming it tomorrow night. Let's talk to Brett Pankari. Brett, so Johnny, you got a copy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it hanging out there? Uh, miracle being up here. Probably gonna get blown by, probably gonna get destroyed in a little bit. Uh, not much else. <laughs> Well, it's been interesting. We've never done this car track combo. We tested it once. Everyone was worried about how the car will handle in the corners. How is it feeling for you? Uh, right now, it's not bad for me. Uh, I'll be able to hold it wide open. Uh, but I'll have to see how it goes, though, because we are going green strongly. So. Here we're going uh, green right this moment, so I'm going to drag you back. Good luck. All right, thanks. Brett Pukari, ladies and gentlemen, lined up, ready to go back green. Here we go. Pace car will make the hard left onto pit road. Uh, Doug Newbigging, Daniel Mosteller. Brett Bunkari, Vincent Gucci, Gavin Austin, James Thurston. 17 laps to go from the Auto Club Speedway. Thurston, Austin, Brower, Schmidt, Kenyon, Max Steinmeier up to 10. Seventeen drivers left on the racetrack, running in this main pack. Still seventeen laps to go. First in, Vincent Gucci, William Schmidt. 
Don't be big in. Pushing Mostella to the lead. Demos top of the board. New bigging. Move outside Mostella on the bottom. Bukhari is just still staying in line. He talked about it. He was worried about getting ran over. But he is now in an area where he could still get ran over by other machines. He is not leading anymore. He's now in the thick of it. Three wide. Gavin Austin to the Ferrari. Contact with New Bigging. Lined up two by two. 15 to go. Schmidt in seven. Brower in eighth. River Page in 11th, riding on with him. Page has been all over the place. Lowest 39. 14 lots to go this time by. Austin on the bottom, New Bigging on the outside. Gucci, Mostella, wheel to wheel. Three wides off. Move out of the way. Maybe Hornish, Max Steinmeier. Another one looking for an advantage. Steinmeier in ninth, New Bigging to the lead. Thirteen laps to go in the top, let's say eleven. Under a second of each other, but still nose to tail and wheel to wheel. I mean elbows distance between first and second. You see new bigging stalking down, trying to keep Austin in bay. Brower in seventh, Thurston in eighth. Bukhari and I. Steinmeier in 10th, River Page still in 11, has not been able to make a move. Twelve to go from Auto Club. Now we've had some weird races on the ovals. We took the Indy cars to Daytona that one time. And the GT3s are here. Look at that moves. <laughs> Putting on the windshield wipers. Some drivers scooting away. Others still expecting to go to the finish. New bigging to the outside. Big move. But will it stick? For the rest of this race, let's dial in Schmidt. Schmidt, it's a John. You got a copy? Yeah, I got it. How's the handling out there? It's really sketchy. Really? You expect the GT3 to be absolutely just sealed to the ground? Yeah, it's really bumpy in the corner, and honestly, the car just doesn't like it all that much. We're sitting there in fourth. We got a good amount of wrecks. These other schemes, or the, should we say the cars that would be used at GTD or GTD Pro, should we say at Daytona? Worried about this thing going to the finish? Uh, pretty decent position right now, as long as the second's getting a good run going, have a good shot of the win. Well, you're in the one of the Ferraris. Uh, this class has been dominated by Porsche, mainly on the road courses. I don't think we've seen anything else but Porsche win here. You think you get a win for a Ferrari at all? It's definitely possible. I'm hoping I can take it from him at some point. We got a line forming right behind me, so there's a good shot that we can be up to the front here really soon. Is there a faster manufacturer? Uh, not really, although Porsche, for some reason, is at a severe handling disadvantage. Really? Yeah, lots of people driving Porsches have had issues in the corner. Well, how about that? Great on a road course, can't get it done on an oval. But hey, Ferrari and BMW, well, not BMW, should I say Mercedes, even though there's a BMW in this race. Now, they've been handling a little bit 
better than each other? I mean, obviously it's better than the Porsche, but Ferrari versus BMW most looks like he's just running on cruise control. Yeah, it definitely looks that way. I don't, I don't really know if there is an advantage or not. I, this is the only GT3 I own, so I have no clue. But not, it looks like a lot of people up here, like the Ferraris and the, the Mercs, are pretty even. It looks like. But yeah, really, the only thing I know is the Porsche. For some reason, is just not having a good day. Oh, I am so sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Had no idea that the overlays crashed for y'all. You had no idea what was going on. We're down to eight laps to go in this race. But yes, there is eight laps to go. The overlay is a ticking tower, should we say. The tower was off. Well, Schmidt, you got eight laps. You're single filing up your tires. Are they meaning anything? Tires haven't really been all that much. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really know if on here, but for the first 23, almost 24 laps now, they haven't really been all that much. It's going to be a lot of fun to see. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Schmitty, ladies and gentlemen, he's right in the middle of this pack. If you're wondering if it's new, and it's very much not new for us to do mid-race interviews, we've definitely adopted that from the SRX side. Douglas Zubingi back in that sixth position has been backing up to the Josh Kenyon machine that's sitting in fifth. Why? Runs. The idea is to run down the back stretch, swoop to the outside, and get some type of forward momentum advantage the driver's in front of him. Well, he's going to drop back, and that will be to the Matthew Brower BMW. At least that was the idea. I guarantee they're going to think about collecting it again. Brower could go top here. He may need to have the lap machine get out of harm's way. And that's not a lap machine. Josh Kane just does not have a nose. You expect lap machines to not have a clean, or a, should we say, you don't expect uh, front runners to have a beat up race car well for Josh Kennedy he very much does and for Matthew Brower he is caught up to that sixth place position whoa one spinning Kevin Austin back up across and into the outside wall a lot of damage to the right side no caution they all get through Mosteller Thurston Schmidt and Kenyon Five to go. Brower in fifth. Steinmeier in sixth. New big in Kunkari, Rich, and Hornish, ninth and ten. And McCrane still back there in 11 with this top five, or now wheel to wheel. I still think Max Steinmeier can at least close on in. He's one of the BMWs. Four to go this time by. Thurston on the bottom. Mosteller in hand with him. Brower in the fourth position. A lot of Ferraris and BMWs. I mean, this was, or should we say Ferraris and Mercedes. It has definitely been their day, but that lone BMW showing some strength. Matthew Brower on the outside. First into the lead. Schmidt holding and waiting to see what goes right and what maybe goes wrong. Thurston and Schmidt, Schmidt on the outside, how about it, tandem drafting for that top spot, and Mosteller is right there with them. Brower in third, Kenyon back to fifth, Max Steinmeier back in the sixth position. Two to go from the Auto Club Speedway. Ferrari versus Mercedes. Thurston on the inside. 
Schmidt on the outside. The top four has been able to pull away. But when do you make the move if you're Moss Teller? When do you make the move if you're Matthew Brower? Brower has never won a race in NR9 in America. Last driver to get their first win from Auto Club, Alexander Cranky. Could it be broken? Salablanca, one to go from California. Still locked in two by two, and that 87 has not been able to get off the back end of James Thurston. Schmidt on the outside, had a blinking brow, and will use the lap traffic as a pick to pull back across wheel to wheel. This is gonna be the finish from the Auto Club Speedway. Thurston 96, Schmidt 79. Mosteller through the middle. It doesn't work out. James Thurston's gonna go California dreaming and win from the Auto Club Speedway. And for Matthew Brower, his first win will most definitely have to wait. As Schmidt comes home with the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. This quick stream, due to, not me, uh, due to me not being able to stream on Friday. Well, a lot of excitement, a lot of joy heading into the coming weeks, the coming months. Should we say the coming days? We stream again Tuesday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on the IDK Player YouTube channel. And then the next stream will be a YouTube short stream Sunday live from the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Yes, that's right. In person, Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, not in the simulator. Let me call on the action high atop the tower for opening day. I'm John Ramos, the voice of NR, and this has been the April Fool's edition of NR Night in America. Tomorrow, we'll be back to our regular scheduled hard nose etiquette racing. Martinsville, race one, that's the next gen race. Race two, three, four, all yet to be decided. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all real, real soon. If you'd like to hear any of my in-person broadcasts, live on Race in America from the Bristol Motor Speedway this Saturday. Live on Racing America and Track TV, possibly for the power of uh, 2B TV. On the Racing America side, opening day at the National Fairground Speedway. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you all in less than 24 hours.